Just want to create characters that look like them or don't look like them, but they want to personalize things. You're seeing a, a lot more diversity in characters in games. You're seeing more diversity of people on the stage. And I think this is really important because, you know, gaming entertainment's for everyone, so we should all be giving input. I love doing things that are, are shaping the future and things that are new and innovative and open up opportunity. I think we are seriously on the precipice of something beautiful because all of us are coming together, we think different ways, everything is creative and we're getting these incredible products. It's about making sure all voices are heard. Not all voices are loud, but all voices are important. We all are our best when we embrace who we actually are. If you can see it, you can be it. I see Microsoft supporting women in data center roles, which is quite integral to meeting both the growth trajectory of this sector and delivering data center capacity at the scale that the organization needs us to perform, and also by having diverse um, viewpoints within our organization, it allows us to best represent the viewpoints of our customer base. It's not just technology, but I believe women has a different point of view, and that is very important for making companies successful. It's very, very appealing to see the, the growth in women coming in and applying for the positions. I'd really like to think that at some point, just by virtue of numbers, the population of women in data centers and technology in general are going to grow organically but I think that Microsoft plays a huge part in ensuring that people have at least exposure to what technology is and the vast opportunities that are available. We want to get the best talent at Microsoft so that teams are successful, the product is successful, the business is successful. Um, and without, you know, you have to have the diversity because you have to bring in the best talent. It doesn't matter who you are, you know, where you came from, um, it's just about working together as a team. Microsoft uh, is different from other companies uh, about diversity and inclusion because we have uh, all kind of people working here and we have so much campaigns to uh, give to um, uh, help other people so I see a great company to do all the things. I decided to work at Microsoft because it's something I always want since I was a child. Um, and I saw here a lot of opportunities to grow and, and you know, get more skills. Microsoft wants to be the leader in the industry and we value the people that work here. That means we need to be different and we need to encourage ideas, um, recognize that it takes all sorts of individuals to contribute and all sorts of experiences to do that. Uh, Microsoft values all employees and that's why it has a great teams, very important teams and uh, we can reach our, our goals and objectives inside of the company. The goal was really just trying to get them comfortable not being afraid to make mistakes. Everybody listen to Courtney, please. So to get the cat to pop out, I had to, like, to get it out, do this math with it. And what's like, that math for? <laughs> to, when you click, to show where it will go. Okay, so. Every job is gonna, I believe, have more of a technology component to it. Coding has taught me that nothing comes easy. <laughs> Girls Who Code is a lot more than just coding. Um, we cover a lot of life skills, asking questions, working together, and teamwork. Coding makes you like be able to create stuff. I get to see my what I create come to life. <laughs>
women can participate in our event as organizers and speaker who can help build our confidence. We have the same chance to uh, contribute regardless of where we came from and uh, our capabilities. Anyone can learn and start their career in tech as long as they are willing to deep learning and uh, developing themselves. Hello, my name is Noni Marin in India. I'm also a communication director in Female Geek. When I'm not coding, I'm doing test case and app testing using a manual test to make sure that uh, the app fits the requirements to deliver a good quality app. I explore, learn, and do experiments in automation testing, then implement it in the mobile app. I also study English to further my knowledge about IT vocabularies and terms. I love meeting new people. I'm, I'm an extrovert who gets energy when I'm a crowd, talk and love with them. My energy is boosted up and I want to be a part of introducing IT uh, to women across Indonesia. Uh, and for now, I'm uh, also communication director in Female Geek, and today Female Geek has uh, 11 regional communities all over the country. For example, Jakarta, Aceh, and Lombok. We do share knowledge, mentoring, and coaching for an IT ex IT field such as web development, mobile development, and everything else. Uh, we can ask and share uh, knowledge in one place because we have a uh, solidarity to help each other as a woman. Uh, in Female Geek, I learned to how to handle events, meet new people, make new friends, including my first experience as a speaker in front of more than 75 audiences. And I still remember that people listened and gave me claps after the event ends. Uh, we talked to each other and some of them uh, asked me to take a picture together and I felt like a celebrity. <laughs> And after that, I got chance as a speaker for some events, podcasts, and else. And it has helped me become more confident and believe in myself. Female Geek is a community for women, but we come from diverse backgrounds like students, employees, and entrepreneurs and homemakers. Uh, I believe uh, women can participate in our event as organizers and speakers who can help build our confidence. We have the same chance to uh, contribute regardless of where we came from and uh, our capabilities. Like. Also, uh, we have one program, uh, Blend Coding, where we tell coding uh, like HTML, CSS, and PHP for people who are visually impaired. So some of them enroll in university and got good uh, GPAs. Yeah, uh, before COVID-19, uh, we often have gatherings and meetups. Now uh, we do that online through sharing session and group chat. As a woman working in the IT field in Indonesia, in my opinion, uh, IT women's progress still has a long way to go in area that men uh, dominate. Our presence in, in the IT field will create a more equal and diverse and diverse environment. For example, uh, men and women can equally share opinions and give inputs during a meeting at work. <laughs> Sometimes the woman just like a uh, still quiet and just listen but uh, maybe uh, a woman can improve their uh, share their opinions and uh, give inputs I mean uh, I think it is good uh, maybe some people find a new uh, purpose in the IT area, uh, technology will constantly develop, making word it in the IT area trend and, and, and demand job. Then, and anyone can learn and start their career in tech as long as they are willing to deep learning and uh, developing themselves. Yeah, just like uh, practicing for the coding and then uh, try and learn new technology. Uh, when I wrote my thesis, I created a desktop app to generate automatic uh, queue numbers for hospitals. I went to hospital to uh, designate uh, my case background on developing the automatic queue number. Uh, the desktop contains the queue number and then uh, is the remaining uh, queue number and information about specialist doctor uh, the patient uh, wants to go to. I will 
tell my best self to learn and to keep practicing a little more and uh, because when I'm young I'm, I'm a bit lazy <laughs> and I will tell her not to be afraid of doing trial and error error is vital uh, but it is not in the end point the way uh, the press trial and error suggests instead uh, it's a signal that something needs to change uh, it gives us the information we need to make an appropriate uh, adjustment to our behavior to either improve or redirect ourselves. I'm hoping to see more uh, women join the IT field and the and tech community to share knowledge and become uh, pioneers in the IT world. Seluruh perubahan ini dimungkinkan dengan hadirnya teknologi. Mix reality is that it's not just driving new business outcomes, juga dapat meningkatkan kualitas pendidikan, mewujudkan Indonesia nol karbon dengan dukungan peran teknologi dalam penyerapan karbon. As we think about why are these tools so important, it's all about being human, right? Agile, uh, Scrum, segala macam yang kita manfaatkan. Indonesia has almost one million digital talent. Mari kita kawal terus dan kita lahirkan terus talenta-talenta digital. Bagaimana industri itu kita dorong mengupgrade. Diri. Dari digital-digital inisiatif yang ada Dalam pemberdayaan uh, digital talent yang ada di Indonesia The best thing about working at Microsoft is definitely my team and team members. I am very grateful that I get to work with such talented engineers and they make work fun. I chose a career in technology because I'm naturally very curious. My job is developing the hardware of a topological quantum computer. And that is of course not a single person task. I am part of a big international team at Microsoft Quantum. I could mention tons of things that excite me about my job. So in my team, we work with the largest manufacturing companies to transform their businesses digitally. We are here to make companies cool, to enable them to achieve more. The best thing about my job is that it's not just about my job. At Microsoft, I get to feed my inner nerd while still having a family life that I appreciate. To me, it's extremely important that we have a diverse set of competencies in order to support our clients the best way possible. I feel like working at Microsoft, we are all valued by what we bring to the table, the ideas that we have, and not so much based on our gender, race, or sexuality. Tech being one of the highest paid sectors and also one of the areas where you have the most flexibility to work and manage your personal life, it can really be an empowering space. I feel it's very unfortunate that there is a gender gap in the tech industry. I sincerely believe that diversity is important because diversity leads to diverse opinions and diverse opinions leads to diverse solutions. There's a world of opportunities at Microsoft to join different communities and initiatives, whatever is interesting for you. Every industry is becoming a tech industry. So I would encourage everyone to go in this direction and play a role in order to translate the business pain points to something enabled by tech.
I'm quite optimistic about the progress that I have seen the last few years, even at my young age, on the unequal gender balance in our industry. Even though there's still a lot of work to do, I can already see um, the difference. For example, when I joined engineering, we were 20 women out of 220. And by the time I graduated, we were triple that number. Microsoft offers a diverse and highly competent environment fostering personal growth. Technology is the present and the future. As much as we need technology, technology needs us. So we should join tech industry. Science is fun and entertaining and you don't have to be a dork or a nerd to like science. You can just be a normal human who likes explosions. You know, if you have women leaders or diverse leaders, I think it just attracts other diversity, which I think is incredibly important, especially in a creative space. If you don't have diverse perspectives in technology, you're going to create technology that only represents a sliver of what our world is like. There is something for everyone. Players want to create characters that look like them or don't look like them, but they want to personalize things. You're seeing a, a lot more diversity in characters in games. You're seeing more diversity of people on the stage. And I think this is really important because, you know, gaming entertainment's for everyone, so we should all be giving input. I love doing things that are shaping the future and things that are new and innovative and open up opportunity. I think we are seriously on the precipice of something beautiful because all of us are coming together, we think different ways, everything is creative and we're getting these incredible products. It's about making sure all voices are heard. Not all voices are loud, but all voices are important. We all are our best when we embrace who we actually are. If you can see it, you can be it. I see Microsoft supporting women in data center roles, which is quite integral to meeting both the growth trajectory of this sector and delivering data center capacity at the scale that the organization needs us to perform, and also by having diverse um, viewpoints within our organization, it allows us to best represent the viewpoints of our customer base. It's not just technology, but I believe women has a different point of view and that is very important for making companies successful. It's very, very appealing to see the, the growth in women coming in and applying for the positions. I'd really like to think that at some point, just by virtue of numbers, the population of women in data centers and technology in general are going to grow organically. But I think that Microsoft plays a huge part in ensuring that people have at least exposure to what technology is and the vast opportunities that are available. We want to get the best talent at Microsoft so that teams are successful, the product is successful, the business is successful. Um, and without, you know, you have to have the diversity because you have to bring in the best talent. It doesn't matter who you are, you know, where you came from, um, it's just about working together as a team. Microsoft uh, is different from other companies uh, about diversity and inclusion because we have uh, all kind of people working here and we have so much campaigns to uh, give to um, uh, help other people so I see a great company to do all the things. I decided to work at Microsoft because it's something I always want since I was a child. Um, and I saw here a lot of opportunities to grow and, and you know, get more skills. Microsoft wants to be the leader in the industry and we value the people that work here. That means we need to be different and we need to encourage ideas, um, recognize that it takes all sorts of individuals to contribute and all sorts of experiences to do that. Uh, Microsoft values all employees and that's why it has a great teams, very important teams and uh, we can reach our, our goals and objectives inside of the company.
The goal was really just trying to get them comfortable not being afraid to make mistakes. Everybody listen to Courtney, please. So to get the cat to pop out, I had to like to get it out, do this math with it. And what's like, that math for? <laughs> to when you click to show where it will go. Okay, so every job is gonna, I believe, have more of a technology component to it. Coding has taught me that nothing comes easy. <laughs> Girls Who Code is a lot more than just coding. Um, we cover a lot of life skills, asking questions, working together, and teamwork. Coding makes you like be able to create stuff. I get to see my what I create come to life. <laughs> Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Block 71 Indonesia, an ecosystem builder and a global connector. On behalf of NUS Enterprise and Salim Group, I bid everyone a warm welcome. My name is Augustin, I am the program manager of Block 71 Jakarta. And my name is Alif, I'm a program manager of Block 71 Bandung. And welcome to Kartini Spirit in Startup. From, from ideation, ideation to Scale Up! <laughs> Oke, okay, terima kasih untuk tepuk tangannya. Oke, okay, mungkin sebelum kita mulai lagi, yang kosong uh, kursinya boleh diisi dulu ke depan ya. Teman-teman sekalian yang di, duduk di belakang, boleh maju ke depan. Oke, okay, thank you so much. Oke, okay, uh, selain itu, kita juga mau mengucapkan nih, Cik, selamat hari Kartini untuk semua perempuan-perempuan hebat di Indonesia. Salah satunya yang di sebelah saya, Wah, Cik Agustin. Wah, <laughs> Dan juga... Uh, kita juga tidak lupa untuk menyukkan, mengucapkan selamat berpuasa untuk teman-teman uh, Islam yang sedang melanjutkan. Oke, okay, dan kita juga mau mengucapkan, kita dari pihak uh, Blok 71 dan teman-teman yang ada di sini, tim produksi, speaker, moderator, dan tamu undangan udah mematuhi protokol kesehatan yang diberlakukan. So, kita mau minta izin buat lepas maskernya. Ya. Yeah. Oke, okay. nyangkut. Oke. Okay. Nah, Liv, uh, before we start the event nih ya, uh, I want to open up with a pantun nih untuk uh, yep. to celebrate Hari Kartini buat semuanya Ii, nih menarik ya. Menarik nih ada pantun. <laughs> Kartini adalah pahlawan bangsa, cerminan untuk para wanita. Mewujudkan startup termuka sasi ya, membutuhkan jiwa Kartini di dalamnya. <laughs> Oke, okay, tepuk tangan dong buat pantunnya. Berasa kayak di maskai pesawat gitu dikasih pantun ya. <laughs> Oke okay, oke, okay. ini kan kita like, tadi lagi ngebahas terkait Kartini dan kita sama-sama merayakan hari Kartini pada hari ini. Ya. Mungkin sebagai representatif perempuan-perempuan hebat yang ada di sini, mungkin aku mau nanya nih sama Cia Agustin, makna hari Kartini itu seperti apa sih apalagi di zaman sekarang ya? Iya menurut saya sih Raden, uh, Raden Ajeng Kartini adalah sosok uh, modern ya yang dari masa lalu, tapi di mana prinsip-prinsipnya Raden Ajeng itu bisa dijadikan contoh Ya, buat perempuan di zaman sekarang. Nah, contohnya sebagai apa? Dia itu a womanpreneur dan juga an educator that want to empower people. Yep. And he's also a fierce advocate for women's right. Nah, seperti para-para narasumber kita yang hari ini, ada tujuh orang womanpreneur di sini nih hari okay. ini ya. Oke, thank you semua yang udah datang ya, Cia. Iya, nah Liv, mau nanya kenapa sih Microsoft uh, memilih tema hari ini, Kartini Spirit in Startup? Yep. Kenapa Microsoft memilih Kartini in, uh, Spirit in Startup ya? Karena Microsoft sebagai salah satu perusahaan teknologi terbesar di Indonesia, sangat memperhatikan kontribusi dan pengaruh fitur perempuan dalam dunia teknologi dan bisnis, Cia. Mm. Dan dalam acara ini juga, Microsoft Indonesia berkolaborasi dengan Innovation Factory dan tentu saja Block 71 Indonesia. Jadi mohon tepuk tangan sekali lagi dong. Buat yes. Oke, okay. tadi kan kita udah cerita nih terkait kenapa sih alasan uh, Microsoft memilih topik Kartini. Yeah. Mungkin uh, sekarang aku mau nanya juga nih, uh, alasan kenapa para penggerak startup khususnya yang ada di sini untuk mengikuti, wajib mengikuti program Microsoft yang Founder Sub ini, Ci? Ya, jadi Founder Sub uh, adalah inisiatif dari Microsoft untuk mendukung startup Indonesia dari ideation stage sampai scale up. Dan mereka memberikan benefit seperti Azure Credit sampai dengan 150 ribu US dollar, uh, akses gratis ke development tools termasuk GitHub dan Microsoft Team, dan juga Microsoft Code Without Barriers untuk meningkatkan skill talenta wanita. Dan juga uh, join Block 71 Community buat startup-startup founder supaya kalian mendapat akses ke mentor-mentor di Block 71, dapat akses ke VC dan investor juga untuk Betul. mendapatkan funding dan support untuk ekspansi bisnis kalian ke luar negeri. Karena Block 71 sekarang tuh ada di enam negara dan sembilan kota. 
Oke, berarti menarik banget ya kalau teman-teman yang ada di sini ataupun yang nonton sekarang untuk ikut di Founders Hub ini. Soalnya yes. benefitnya banyak banget, seperti Betul. yang dikatakan Cia Agustin. Tapi kalau mau tambah benefit lagi, boleh ikut. Kayak tadi Cia Agustin bilang, join ke komunitasnya Block 71, kayak gitu. Oke, Ci, mungkin sekarang boleh dijelasin nggak hari ini tuh aktivitas kita apa aja sih? Ya, jadi hmm. setelah ini akan ada kata sambutan dari representatif Microsoft. Setelah itu, follow by to panel discussion dengan tema Journey of a Woman Founder okay. dan Kartini-Kartini Startup. Setelah panel discussion akan ada juga Founders Home Launching sekitar jam 5.20 and it will be followed by pengumuman pemenang Cloud Skill Challenge dari Microsoft. Setelah itu kita akan tutup dengan book berbareng dan juga networking session di tiga kota. Oke, okay, ternyata banyak aktivitas yang seru ya hari ini ya. Jadi nggak iya. sabar gitu buat ngikutin aktivitas semuanya sampai akhir. Tapi sebelum kita masuk ke main session untuk teman-teman yang di sini ada di, di infokan juga kita sekarang lagi live streaming juga di YouTube dan ada juga uh, teman-teman kita dari Blok Seventuan Bandung dan Blok Seventuan Yogyakarta yang lagi watching party nih. Jadi iya. mungkin kita mau sapa-sapa mereka dulu nih dari mungkin dari Bandung ya, Ci. Iya, Bandung. Yep. Halo, halo Bandung. Halo Bandung. Kedengeran kah? Halo. Nah. Mas Kamal. Mas Kamal. Mas Kamal, itu cucunya diangkat dulu Mas Kamal. <laughs> Apa kita ke Jogja dulu kali ya? Iya mungkin kita ke Jogja dulu ya. Uh, kita ke Jogja dulu sambil nunggu MC-nya di Bandung Mas Kamal. Uh, join di stage-nya. Mungkin dari Jogja kita sapa dulu. Halo. Oh, tuh udah. Oh, udah ada, ada Kamal nih, ada Kamal nih. Halo, Kamal. Halo. Tapi nggak kedengeran suaranya. Bentar ya. Oke, okay. suara saya jelas. Aman, 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 aman. Aman. Sorry, tadi lagi lagi asik, lagi asik, lagi asik, lagi asik, lagi asik, lagi asik, lagi asik. Oke, kayak gitu ya. Gimana kabar di Bandung nih? Hari ini ngapain aja? Gimana sesinya? Jadi kan meskipun kita belum banyak orang. Gimana kabar ya, teman-teman? Rame. Terima kasih guys sudah datang ke acara hari ini. Yes, mereka juga memang lagi ngincer uh, souvenir dari Microsoft sebenarnya. Ngincer <laughs> souvenir. <laughs> tapi Jakarta aman, Ali. Jakarta aman, tapi macet. Macet tetap, macet tetap. <laughs> Pada telat okay. nih attendance ini. Oke, okay, tentu saja memang di sini benar-benar menarik sekali ada sambutan dari Mas Vicky, juga uh, ekspertis dan juga pembicara yang akan kita sambutnya dari Mas Vicky. Mereka semua sampai sudah melakukan langsung di slideo untuk tanya sesuatu yang belum dimulai. Oh udah siap ya, udah sign up di Slido ya buat ntar mantap, acara mantap, panel mantap. discussion ya. Jadi semangat banget nih buat ngikutin Q&A session kita. Kita di sini semuanya siap, Alif dan juga Ci, kita semuanya di sini siap dan kami berikan di Jakarta, silakan. Thank you, okay. Kamal. Sip. Thank you, Kamal. Dan terima kasih sekali lagi buat teman-teman yang ada di Bandung yang udah join di kantor kita di Blok 71 Bandung buat watching party-nya. Oke, okay, selanjutnya kita move ke Blok 71 Jogja. Halo, Blok 71 Jogja. Halo. Wah, on time, Halo. on cue. Terang banget ya, Nindia hari ini ya. <laughs> Halo. Apa uh, kabar? Uh, wah, kalau di sini bukan apa kabar. Jadi apa? Pake Kabare. Oke. Kabare Tejawo. Oke, oke. Ulang ya, ulang ya. Pie Kabare Nindia. Sae di sini di Jogja. Dan teman-teman semuanya yang sudah hadir di sini, kita boleh say hi dulu semuanya. Halo, teman-teman Jogja. Kalau lu masih agak lewat ya, biasanya kita belum buka puasa ya, tapi enggak apa-apa. Kita bakal ada juga di sini. Nanti kita bakal ikutin seluruh rangkaian acara yang ada dari Jakarta dan juga teman-teman di Bandung. Kita akan menyapa juga hari semuanya yang ada di Bandung. Semoga sehat selalu semuanya. Thank you. Amin, amin, amin. Juga untuk teman-teman dari Jogja udah mengalami acara hari ini. Itu dia laporan dari Jogja di blog Sampai Teman Jogja. Siap-siap. Thank you, thank you Nindia dari tim Jogja ya. Wah seru banget ya ternyata watching party kita di dua kota itu. Yes. Tapi nggak cuma di dua kota ini, kita juga ada... Teman-teman kita di online uh -huh. ya, di YouTube channelnya uh, Data Science Indonesia, betul. Microsoft, yes. dan juga di uh, Decoder yes. ya. Yes. Betul, betul banget, betul banget. Oke, sekali lagi thank you so much buat teman-teman di Jogja dan di Bandung. Nah, sebelum kita mulai panel discussion nih, kita mau mengundang uh, Vicky Stiono, Country Lead of Azure Business Group untuk menyampaikan kata sambutan. Silakan okay. Mas Vicky. Berikan tepuk tangan yang paling meriah dong buat Mas Vicky.
Selamat sore rekan-rekan semua. Uh, saya minta izin juga untuk uh, membuka masker. Uh, senang sekali bisa berada di uh, sini. Saya bersyukur uh, pertama karena ini adalah mungkin event pertama saya bisa berkumpul di dalam suasana seperti ini mungkin after uh, two years. So I'm being, being very grateful for that. Uh, tapi yang very excited untuk uh, saya dan Microsoft hari ini uh, to the fact uh, ini adalah hari Kartini dan Semangat dari Kartini actually profoundly impacting how Microsoft is today. Um, how we run our business and operation today is largely sekarang di-influence dengan uh, this line of importance around diversity dan inclusion. It affects how we develop technology. Kalau teman-teman mungkin pernah melihat how we develop uh, uh, our line of technology yang promoting diversity and inclusion. Mulai dari Xbox controller yang difasilitate untuk accessibility, people with accessibility can also play games. Um, kemudian kita membuat uh, many AI capabilities untuk um, people with needs, gitu ya. Dan particularly um, untuk uh, hari ini tema inclusion akan ada beberapa hal yang nanti akan saya bisa sharing lebih detail di uh, sesinya Microsoft uh, on how uh, Microsoft embracing inclusivity when it comes to women empowerment. It comes to many line of uh, work untuk Microsoft. Uh, we are actually um, be part dari um, community-nya UN SDG. Uh, we are committed untuk membantu pelaksanaan UN SDG. Kalau nggak, saya nggak salah, poin yang kelima mengenai women empowerment. Um, dan further than that, we are developing more programs that are promoting inclusivity. Well, inclusivity comes with many things. Founders Hub sendiri, nanti saya akan share more detail The background on how Microsoft built uh, Founders Hub as a startup program is actually the spirit of inclusivity. Dan kita juga akan launching satu program, sudah sebetulnya, uh, nanti akan saya sharing lebih detail, yaitu adalah Code Without Barriers, which is adalah um, our um, real work untuk elevate, trying to elevate the gender gap on women in technology, data, dan AI. Um, then I think It's, it's why we are all today um, to celebrate um, inclusivity. When it comes to inclusivity, um, dari point of view-nya Microsoft, uh, it will not progressing without collective effort. We have a long way to go, but we believe by working together, we can make impact and lasting changes. Itu aja dari saya. Terima kasih banyak. Uh, selamat sore. Thank you so much Mas Vicky untuk welcoming rimasnya tadi banyak banget ya informasi-informasi yang disampaikan Mas Vicky tapi ya. kita nggak sabar nih buat nunggu yang lebih detailnya lagi di sesinya yang di Founder Hubs launch ya, di sesi nanti, ya. terakhir yes dan kita move ke next sesinya kita akan ada panel discussion di mana kita akan menginvite kita udah menginvite perempuan-perempuan hebat nih di hari ini dan di sesi panel pertama ini Topik yang akan kita bahas lebih ke Kartini Kartini Stara nah, dan yang akan ngelit siapa sih Nici? Jadi hari ini kita ada moderatornya dari Analia Tan, uh, founder of Kido, dan juga speakernya Belinda Lewis, co-founder of Titan Tech, Nadia, VP of Marketing of Wafyu, dan uh, Budeta Aisyah, co-founder and CBO of Binar Academy. Oke, okay, kita invite langsung ke di atas stage uh, panelis dan para moderatornya. Beri tepuk tangan yang paling meriah untuk mereka semua. Halo semuanya, apa kabar? Senang sekali, aku Analia Tan, CEO dan co-founder dari Kido.id. Hari ini dikasih kesempatan untuk jadi moderator dari tiga kartini hebat kita yang ada di sofa ini. Boleh tepuk tangannya dulu dong buat mereka semua. Dan aku juga senang banget karena Kido.id kita itu merupakan um, startup yang disupport sekali sama Block 71 dan juga Microsoft. Kita merupakan salah satu startup binaan Microsoft juga, jadi happy banget bisa uh, 
ada di panggung ini dan offline ketemu sama teman-teman semua. Cuma hari ini aku nggak mau ngomongin soal kido.id, meskipun aku mau at least sedikit kali ya boleh ya. <laughs> kido.id kita adalah the first and leading kids activity marketplace di Indonesia. Saat ini kita udah punya belasan ribu users dan juga ribuan merchants di seluruh Indonesia. Harapan kita bisa membuat generasi masa depan anak-anak yang benar-benar akan memasuki abad 21 dengan skill yang memang dibutuhkan di saat itu. Nah, tapi tiga temanku saat ini bisnisnya juga nggak kalah keren. Kalau aku memulai di bidang edukasi, teman-temanku ini ada yang di edukasi juga, ada yang di bidang yang lagi happening nih akhir-akhir ini, AR, VR, metaverse, dan juga ada yang Um, apa ya sama membumi uh, apa lagi booming juga nih tentang UMKM di Indonesia kita kenalan dulu kali ya satu persatu kalau dari contekan aku pertama dari Belinda Lewis co-founder and CEO of Titan Stack halo Hai. mungkin uh, boleh perkenalan diri dulu nih Bel ke teman-teman semua yang hadir di sini uh, Belinda mungkin um, backgroundnya terus apa sih yang dikerjain di Titan Stack oke okay, thank you so much Uh, perkenalkan semuanya, saya dengan Belinda, saya co-founder and CEO of Titan Stack. Mungkin just quickly sharing about uh, our background and my background as well. So Titan Stack itu merupakan sebuah immersive technology solutions company. Mungkin kalau teman-teman sekarang lagi sering dengar ya, the word metaverse, the term web3, the word NFT and blockchain, actually we are right in the middle of that industry. Jadi Titan Stack ini tujuannya apa? Memang kita fokus lebih banyak di services at this point in time. Most of our clients are also B2B and large corporations di mana mereka tuh ingin mengintroduce atau mungkin jump in juga di dunia immersive technology. So what is immersive technology? Uh, you hear the word augmented reality, virtual reality, and then juga ada XR, uh, dan juga konten-konten serupa itu. Dan mungkin juga uh, I would like to take this moment juga karena kita di dunia immersive tech, kita juga baru saja launch another company namanya Genesis, which is in the fields of virtual influencers. So okay. itu dunia kita ya. <laughs> jadi kita kita yang di sini bisa nggak sih jadi virtual influencers juga? Atau itu benar-benar totally different? Uh, kita bisa, ketinggalan ya. zaman gitu. <laughs> bisa bisa karena obviously we can create a version of you mm. in an avatar because that's what we do in immersive technology ya. Jadi let's see ke depannya. Could be everyone here will be an avatar oh. in the next world, ya. Yeah. Oke, okay, aku siap-siap abis ini harus pilih avatar yang paling cantik, ya kan? <laughs> nah berikutnya ini ada temanku satu lagi, Nadia Prasetyo, VP dari VP Marketing dari Wahyu. Halo Nadia. Halo. Boleh ceritain juga dong, mungkin backgroundnya Nadia, terus di mark, uh, di Wahyu ini handle apa aja sih? Ya oke, okay. jadi perkenalkan uh, aku Nadia Prasetyo, biasanya dipanggil Nadia, saya VP Marketing di Wahyu. Nah mungkin uh, perkenalan dikit juga tentang Wahyu, Wahyu itu apa? Jadi we are actually an F&B enabler di Indonesia. Jadi F&B enabler tuh maksudnya gimana? We want to support the growth of F&B owners di Indonesia gitu. Nah two main services that we have adalah pertama uh, jaringan distribusi, di mana kita punya aplikasi uh, bisa mengakses ribuan bahan baku untuk para pemilik usaha kuliner. Dan yang kedua, adalah jaringan penjualan di mana kita bisa provide uh, private label yang mana bisa dioperasikan oleh mitra-mitra kita jadi mereka bisa punya pendapatan tambahan seperti itu oke okay. keren banget jadi uh, Wahyu ini uh, membantu UMKM-UMKM di seluruh Indonesia ya jadi Betul. semakin melek digital dan cuannya makin gede gitu ya <laughs> nah yang terakhir nggak kalah keren nih dari uh, Binan Academy ada Deta Aisyah yaitu co-founder dan COO betul Oh, CBO, maaf, CBO dari Binar Academy. Boleh dong di share juga backgroundnya uh, data dan juga apa nih yang dikerjain di Binar Academy? By the way, aku uh, izin. Oh ya, yeah, sure, Jeremy. sure. Oke, okay, uh, first of all, thank you so much for Block 71 and Microsoft for arranging this and for having me. Uh, my name is Data and I'm the Chief of Business Development at Binar Academy. We are the first learning super app from Indonesia. And our mission is to help people and companies to improve themselves in digital skills. Um, our mission is to make learning as fun as watching Netflix and scrolling your Instagram feed. Wow. Um, yeah, digital uh, technology, a lot of people think that it's hard, it's intimidating, but we have been proving ourselves um, that it can be fun and um, it can be addictive and um, you can learn from anywhere, anytime. 
Oke, okay, selama kita tahu konsep atau cara yang tepat, sebenarnya selalu menyenangkan dan nggak sesulit itu gitu ya untuk belajar soal teknologi. Nah teman-teman, kalau misalnya ada yang mau nanya nih sama tiga eh, sahabat aku yang luar biasa ini, cie, kayak motivator banget nggak sih sahabat yang luar biasa? <laughs> Boleh, um, kalau aku nggak salah nih ya, bener nggak ya di layar teman-teman tuh mungkin ada QR code. <laughs> Tapi kalau nggak ada, bisa juga. Uh, go to your uh, browser, terus ketik bit.ly slash askartini founder gitu. Bit.ly slash askartini founder. Tapi kalau ternyata di layarnya ada QR code, tinggal di foto aja terus langsung masuk. Nanti aku uh, bisa cek di handphoneku dan langsung dibacain pertanyaannya uh, yang beruntung gitu ya. Karena kan ribuan orang nih yang datang, gak semuanya bisa aku bacain. <laughs> nah. Uh, sambil nunggu dari teman-teman, aku mau nanya dulu nih ke Belinda, Nadia dan juga Deta. Um, apa ya, kita kan sebagai wanita sering banget nih, uh, isunya tuh uh, sering banget dibicarakan tentang challenges uh, berkarir di dunia teknologi. Dimana katanya sebenarnya ini dunianya para lelaki gitu. <laughs> nah mungkin um, dimulai dari Deta duluan nih, apa sih challenges tapi at the same time jadi opportunities juga um, sebagai wanita di dunia startup atau teknologi. Oke, okay. um, di Indonesia sendiri gitu ya, um, digital talent shortage is huge. Hmm. Indonesia needs about 6 million uh, digital talents um, up until 2023. Sorry, yeah, 2030 actually, mm. um, and we only produce about 50,000 per year from the traditional uh, schools. Campus, yeah. Jadi ada gap sekitar uh, 850 ribu per tahunnya, gitu mm. kan. The talent shortage is so huge to the point that in technology kita tuh sebenarnya nggak bisa afford to be discriminative. Yes. Lo mau cowok, lo mau <laughs> transgender pun, mm. we don't care. Yeah. Kayak lu pasti bisa masuk untuk kerja gitu kan. So I think that's the biggest opportunity hmm. gitu. Gender um, um, itu menjadi kayak priority yang paling bawah if that gitu mm -mm. kan. Yang kedua, a lot of companies are trying their best to attract women talents especially. So let's say you um, have not been working because um, you've been focusing on your baby gitu ya misalnya, and then you wanted to go back to work gitu ya. Banyak sekarang tech companies yang udah punya uh, nursing uh, facilities yes. in their office. Banyak yang uh, punya uh, very flexible working hours so that you can juggle your motherly duties and your professional duties gitu kan. So those are opportunities. This is like the best time. Technology is the best sector for women to actually come in. Hmm. So then if the opportunities are huge, what are the challenge? I think the biggest challenge is self-limiting beliefs. Yes, great. Kayak um oh, Bisa gak ya? Yeah. Oh, you know, I'm not too logical. Oh, you know, I'm bad at math. Itu yang pa paling <laughs> aku dengar itu tuh kayak I'm so bad at math. Yeah, okay. But as long as you try, as long as you do your best, definitely bisa sih masuk ke um, technology sector. Oke. Okay. Sebenarnya aku um, setuju banget karena teknologi ini kita ibarat kata nggak perlu pakai kekuatan fisik gitu ya. Yang selama ini mungkin um, itu yang terkadang membatasi kita sebagai wanita. Tapi di teknologi ini kan ya ibaratnya di depan komputer gitu. Jadi everyone, apapun gendernya sebenarnya harusnya nggak ada perbedaan gitu ya. Cuma tadi Uh, karena culture, mungkin karena uh, apa bisikan kanan kiri merasa dirinya nggak mampu, padahal sebenarnya enggak. Kalau Nadia gimana pendapatnya? Oke, okay. kalau menurut aku uh, di bidang teknologi ini, meskipun kita adalah teknologi, tapi at the end of the day, the ones that we serve adalah people. Hmm. Nah di Wahyu sendiri, who we serve adalah para pemilik usaha kuliner, di mana uh, mereka juga very diverse gitu. Jadi um, ada yang mungkin bapak-bapak, ada yang ibu-ibu, hmm. ada yang muda, ada yang tua. And we also have cases di mana pengusaha kuliner adalah ibu-ibu yang mungkin ibu rumah tangga punya anak, terus dia bikin usaha kuliner yeah. untuk mendukung ekonomi keluarganya gitu. So, so I think um, the role of woman adalah tetap untuk 
uh, understand uh, our customers, the people that who we work for at the end of the day, meskipun kita teknologi. Ya, yeah, oke. Okay. Tapi mungkin um, untuk Nadia ini di Wahyu berapa banyak sih uh, management level mm -hmm. yang uh, wanita gitu dibanding sama yang pria? Lebih banyak mana sekarang? It's, it's an interesting question mm -hmm. actually karena setahun yang lalu kita management levelnya uh, dominated by male. Oke. Okay. Tapi by this year kita udah lumayan balance jadi mm -hmm. mungkin around 60-40 where, where female is the 40%. Oke, okay, nice. Tepuk tangan dulu dong buat wanita Indonesia. <laughs> ya, yeah, karena memang itu harus disuruh support dari level founder untuk uh, apa mulai percaya sama management level uh, dari gender manapun jadi maksudnya um, um, uh, apa namanya nggak peduli cewek atau cowok dilihat dari kualitasnya gitu ya nah kalau cewek yang satu ini nih Belinda bisnisnya ini uh, apa namanya tadi nih yang future banget <laughs> mungkin punya pendapat lain tentang um, challenges bagi wanita untuk masuk ke dunia yang baru banget nih kayak buta gitu Uh, for us, sebenarnya nggak beda jauh ya. I think uh, as women, we all face similar problems. Hmm. In our world at Titan Stack, memang dunia itu immersive technology, which is very new. Now, uh, we noticed that there's a gender gap, mm -hmm. definitely in the tech world. If you enter meetings, for example, I enter meetings, all across the board, <laughs> it's all male, most of the time. Yeah. Uh, although we see a lot of improvements these days, mm -hmm. tapi memang masih ada gapnya yang harus kita improve lagi. Yes. So I think one of the challenges that we have is definitely gender gap is one thing. Uh, second is society expectations mm. of women, especially in the tech world. And thirdly is also the resources and ecosystem, meaning that mungkin untuk di dunia tech itu belum banyak mentor perempuan. Ah. Ya, yeah, masih ada gapnya. So I'm I'm very glad that we have this kind of activities and events to gather up collectively, mm -hmm. you know, uh, yeah. the women uh, that, that focuses on this industry. And also speaking of the management and also the team that we have at uh -huh. Tech. I would say 50-50, kita sudah managed to push through 50% female, 50% uh, male. male. So that is uh, what we're tackling right now. Wow, as well. okay, cool. Jadi memang semua harus dimulai dari company kita masing-masing dulu ya. Baru nanti secara uh, menyeluruh Indonesia akan punya lebih banyak talenta wanita yang masuk jajaran manajemen atau mungkin mendirikan bisnis sendiri kayak beberapa di antara kita juga. Wah, ini pertanyaan udah banyak banget nih yang masuk. Sebentar ya, aku... Nah, ini ada yang menarik nih. Um, tapi kok aku nggak bisa naikin ke atas ya? <laughs> Boleh aku bacain aja nggak ya dari sini? Sebentar. Dari Pertiwi. Ah, kalau boleh disebut namanya. Halo Pertiwi. Mungkin boleh dada-dada kalau ada either di online atau di Bandung atau di Yogyakarta. Uh, Pertiwi ini pertanyaannya, uh, startup aku inovasinya tergolong cukup baru di Indonesia, bikin hambatan besar di tahap R&D-nya. Gimana sih kak cara untuk meyakinkan diri di tahap-tahap kritis ini? Mungkin um, tadi aku minta Deta kali untuk jawab ini ya, nanti secara bergantian yang lain pertanyaan banyak banget nih soalnya. Oke, okay, gimana caranya meyakinkan diri uh, during the incubation? Tata, iya, okay. kritis, krisis nih masih R&D, mungkin belum punya pemasukan, yeah. tapi kos jalan terus ya kan? Yeah, yeah. Oke, okay. so I think first um, you have to really know your purpose, hmm. why do you build your business? Is it because of uh, monetary or is it because social impact? And it's not like having monetary driven purpose is bad ya, tapi you just have to know what it is. Um, apakah, nah yang shallow adalah kalau misalnya you wanted to create a business because oh that's what's cool, that's what's everybody doing, then that's going to be a very poor foundation for your business. And then second thing, know that you are solving a real problem that are faced by a lot of people in um, the community. Gitu kan. Once you are sure your target market is huge, then you just do it. You just start selling. You 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 ask for people's feedback and you try. And you're not going to succeed on your first try for sure. Um, but then keep pushing through um, through those failures. Gitu kan. Nah, yang ketiga adalah have a very strong support system. Because being a founder, being an entrepreneur, it could be a very lonely job. Um, my ex one of uh, an example that um, um, I 
like share uh, uh, like sharing is that kayak misalnya kemarin ada peraturan tentang um, omnibus law hmm. for entrepreneurs that's actually good hmm. tapi for most of your friends who are not an entrepreneur you would not see eye to eye gitu kan jadi kayak you, you need to have very strong um, support system that understand what you go through and um, ya yeah, join communities, sekarang udah banyak banget communities kayak yeah. gitu kan, kayak I know um, ada Stellar Women, for example, Women Works, to name a view. So, yeah, just make sure you check out those communities. Yeah, Block 71 misalnya. Block 71 yeah. juga, <coughs> betul, betul, betul. Yeah. Kalian ya. <laughs> Atau yeah, gitu sih. Uh, Microsoft Founders Hub, ya nah, kan? Nah, <laughs> itu dia Microsoft Founders Hub juga bisa. So you have yeah. a lot of options these days. But yeah, very important for you to have that support system. Oke, okay. thank you. Nah ini ada pertanyaan yang kayaknya cocok nih buat Belinda. Karena tadi kita ngobrol-ngobrol sebelumnya ternyata Belinda juga baru start bisnis yang ini di 2021 awal gitu ya, atau 2020 akhir. Nah ini ada yang nanya nih, Uh, berapa lama prosesnya saat developing startup digital dan paling sulit itu di tahap apa? Oke, okay, interesting question. Berapa lama prosesnya mm-hmm. untuk developing the digital business? Mm-hmm. Oke, okay. uh, kalau berapa lama dulu? Let's start with that ya. Yeah. Yeah. Berapa lama itu sebenarnya uh, tergantung resources, I would say. Uh, in our case, it took us a year to mm. actually do the R&D but also to develop the business plan. Karena when you were about to do a startup, obviously it's not just about the product. Product is the core yeah. feature, but also about the business roadmap, the strategy. Mm-hmm. How do you penetrate the market? Nah itu biasa yang lumayan takes time karena terutama di dunia kita ya, yang digital itu di Indonesia sudah mulai berkembang, mm. uh, tetapi juga masih banyak sekali gap yang harus terutama untuk melalui edukasi ya kepada yeah. market marketnya. Jadi kurang lebih setahun, but it depends on the business juga. Ada yang memerlukan misalkan ternyata cuma 6 bulan, hmm. ada yang perlu mungkin 3 tahun bahkan. Jadi in our case, it's around 1 year. Nah, untuk tadi yang kedua adalah challenges-nya uh, uh, ya. Paling berat di momen yang mana? Momen yang mana? Hmm. Momen paling berat adalah taking that leap of faith pada saat okay. awal kita mulai. Karena kan you actually have to recruit a set of team. Awalnya mungkin as a startup, dulu uh, pertama kali kita mulai itu benar-benar mikirinnya, waduh ini bulan depan aman gak ya, revenue streamnya hmm. masuk gak ya, mau uh, gajian. gajian untuk <laughs> anak-anak dan sebagainya. But uh, we're very fortunate karena hmm. memang uh, the business plan has been really good and kita juga udah ada beberapa investor. Jadi ecosystem yeah. of support is really uh, helpful ya yeah, to hmm. kickstart the business and the okay. startup. Jadi tadi yang paling sulit ya memulainya ya, yes. mengumpulkan uh, energi karena ini perjalanan panjang Betul. ya gak sih? Gak kayak tahun depan selesai gitu yes. kan. Yes. Jadi harus benar-benar tadi juga Deta bilang ya maksudnya harus tahu dulu purpose-nya. Karena ya uh, apa namanya, it's a tough journey kalau kita benar-benar tahu purpose-nya, jalaninnya juga happy gitu. Meskipun berdarah-darah juga sih. <laughs> nah ini ada satu pertanyaan lagi untuk uh, Nadia nih kayaknya. Um, Tadi belum sempat ngobrol, nah dia sebelum di Wahyu ini um, apa kerjanya di mana? Tapi mungkin bisa bantu teman kita satu ini yang lagi mau career switch di usia 30 tahun. Wah, um, dia bilang dia mau career switch di usia 30, um, baru ikut bootcamp karena mau oh sorry mau uh, switch ke tech gitu. Jadi baru ikut bootcamp, tapi lowongan nih kebanyakan harus udah punya experience. Gimana ya? punya jawaban enggak ada dia. Oke, okay, it's interesting. Uh, ya, jadi mungkin sedikit cerita uh, soal switching career. Previously I work in Mark Plus. Uh, itu adalah sebuah consulting company untuk marketing mm-hmm. uh, di Indonesia. Nah, um, as a consultant, I serve a variety types of companies, jadi dari otomotif, dari FMCGs, and so on. Tapi balik lagi, as a consultant, probably I see mostly from the outside. Mm-hmm. Gitu. Nah, uh, then I decided to join Wahyu uh, so that I can see from the inside yeah. and actually execute. Gitu. So, the journey of deciding whether or not I should switch itu juga uh, quite dilematik mm-hmm. karena pastinya um, as a consultant, Sultan udah udah happy gitu dengan pekerjaannya <laughs> dan I think no matter what age that we decide to do that just go for it hmm. uh, apalagi kalau kita udah nemuin motivasinya yeah. kenapa sih kita pengen switch the career gitu not to mention um, banyak banget sekarang fasilitas yang bisa uh, diakses untuk enable kita 
termasuk juga uh, untuk getting experience. Mm -hmm. It's quite funny karena sometimes uh, memang uh, job itu udah require experience, right? Mm -hmm. uh, probably kita bisa uh, cari relatives yang mungkin kita bisa bantuin dulu uh, some parts of the job gitu. Atau kayak misalkan uh, being an internship atau mm -hmm. uh, do a freelance work. Jadi uh, it, it's a small step uh, to eventually achieve what we want to do. Oke, okay. jadi kayak ada harga yang harus dibayar ya. Mungkin kalau karena switch mau nggak mau harus mulai dari tahap yang bawah lagi bisa internship atau misalnya level um, level awal gitu ya. Karena uh, tapi kalau misalnya kita memang termotivasi banget harusnya cepat bisa uh, nangkep dan naik ke apa level karir berikutnya gitu ya. Betul, or oh, yeah. boleh boleh. Sekarang jadi autopilot engineer di Tesla, mm -hmm. and um, she didn't have any uh, data experience before, uh -huh. uh, machine learning experience before, tapi dia rajin banget ikut hackathon. Ah. Jadi itu kayak harus banget um, ada di portofolio, menang lomba-lomba segala macam <laughs> itu bakal ngebantu. Oke, okay. tadi ada satu keyword yang aku suka banget dan kayaknya anak-anak zaman sekarang juga harus uh, mau melakukannya sih, rajin. Karena sekarang tuh kita dimudahkan dengan segala jenis teknologi. Tadi kita sempat ngobrol juga di ruangan um, pembicara gitu. Zaman sekarang cari duit tuh kok gampang ya kayaknya gitu kan. Um, beli aset digital dua menit untungnya dua kali lipat. <laughs> kayaknya um, seolah-olah tuh kayak mudah banget. Tapi kalau kita nggak rajin akan sangat cepat kita ketinggalan lagi gitu. Jadi itu tadi ikut lomba, ikut uh, hackathon, terus juga... Uh, tadi seperti pertanyaan yang tadi tuh bootcamp gitu kan benar-benar harus rajin banget sehingga kita bisa terus catch up sama perkembangan uh, bisnis dan teknologi yang cepet banget gitu ya uh, tadi kita ngobrol udah seru banget ada tiga pertanyaan waktunya juga udah mau habis jadi mungkin aku mau ke pertanyaan pamungkas nih <laughs> buat teman-temanku uh, yang ada di panggung ini um, secara bergantian aku pengen nanya um, Pertama itu adalah uh, apa ya? Gimana kita bisa menginfluence lingkungan kita sebagai wanita dan juga tips buat teman-teman yang saat ini lagi uh, apa ya? Dalam kondisi butuh motivasi gitu karena lagi mungkin ya tadi karena pandemi, dia lagi terpuruk, lagi mau switch career, lagi ada di posisi yang kayaknya udah nggak mungkin naik lagi gitu. Dari teman-teman yang udah berhasil melewatinya lebih dulu bisa kasih masukan. Dari Nadia dulu kali ya. Oke, okay, berarti tadi pertanya pertama pertanyaannya gimana kita bisa as a woman influence, right? Oke, okay, terus yang kedua berarti uh, gimana caranya kita bisa mm, uh, ini ya? Uh, tips buat teman-teman yang sekarang lagi berjuang. Oke, okay, tips mm -hmm. untuk berjuang. Buat kartini lainnya. I see, oke. Okay. Nah, speaking about influence, actually it has a lot to do with being a leader, actually. So sometimes, uh, we, uh, as a women, sometimes we doubt ourselves whether or not kita bisa in, uh, influence people. Uh, probably kita bisa punya tim very diverse, and as a women, sometimes we question ourselves, kayak uh, kita sendiri tuh seperti apa sih, gitu kan. So I think the first thing to do is actually to believe in yourself, um, to, to be confident and just uh, do it, gitu sih. Jadi, um, And, and by having a women sebenarnya kita uh, di man, uh, diuntungkan gitu karena women tends to be uh, tends to have more compassion so by having the compassion towards people i think it helps a lot by uh, to, to influence people hmm. itu. Nah, kalau misalkan untuk yang kedua tadi kan gimana sih untuk memotivate gitu. Tadi uh, aku nge-quote dikit dari Mbak Deta, uh, I think it's a very um, good point where we have to have a support system. Hmm. Karena um, kita uh, sebagai social being nggak uh, bisa sendiri, jadi to have a very good support system will help us a lot. Oke, okay, support system ya. Kalau Belinda Influence ya. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kalau untuk influence, uh, obviously I agree as well. It has to start with the key leaders. Leaders doesn't mean you are founders, but uh, it can be also the team. It can also be the management overall. Mm -hmm. Jadi kalau misalkan leadersnya itu sudah embrace uh, women inside mm -hmm. the workforce, then you actually give them the voice to speak up. Uh, then I think that's a start. That's how you influence and also have a you know kind of a fostering relationship and also uh, environment ya yeah, untuk let them actually voice out their yeah. capabilities 
Dan yang kedua adalah untuk motivation menurut saya as women please don't underestimate yourselves. Hmm. That's the most important thing. Jangan nggak pede seperti tadi berita juga mana dia bilang ya. Dan don't ever underestimate yourself. Karena you're surrounded with a lot of people from the male side. Mungkin lebih male dominated especially in tech. But hmm. once you step in, you memberanikan diri. Actually, you figured out along the way you can do it. And then from there, you will prove yourself. Actually, your surroundings, even though it's male dominated. They will start to listen, and I can hear you can give a different perspective and a fresh perspective from a women's point of view. Karena banyak ya hal-hal yang mungkin kita lebih ada balance nya lah, mm. seperti yin and yang ya between mm. male and female. Yeah. So resilience is one thing, and don't uh, underestimate yourself. Don't underestimate yourself. Okay, Deta. Um, I think I echo to what these women <laughs> have said. Yeah. Uh, maybe I would add one more thing, which is um, to capitalize on uh, what you already have. Um, so simple, kayak, let's say social media, right? Um, you can influence your circle through your so social media, post inspiring stuff there, um, show what you're good at, show your accomplishments, and that's going to boost the confidence, mm. um, you know, from the likes and whatnot, gitu kan. Um, and then you'll know um, that you're worth something, and that makes you even more confident and that confidence is actually the key and the foundations for you to become more outspoken, more um, better leadership skills juga mm -hmm. gitu. Oke, okay. jadi tadi kalau beberapa poin yang aku highlight itu um, jangan underestimate diri sendiri, uh, justru harus percaya diri karena sebenarnya kita nggak different itu cuma ada di kepala kita aja gitu dan terakhir itu kan tadi internal nih dalam diri tapi kita juga butuh bantuan orang lain support system eksternal untuk buat kita jadi wanita yang lebih tangguh lagi gitu ya oke ini kita udah lewat waktunya mohon maaf tapi thank you banget buat semua tadi penanya dan juga terutama buat para speakers kita yang luar biasa boleh tepuk tangan sekali lagi yang di Jakarta Bandung Surabaya Yogyakarta Bandung Yogyakarta dan semua yang hadir secara online aku analiatan pamit dan aku serahkan kembali ke MC yang kece ini terima kasih Thank you so much for the session, ladies. Uh, sekarang kita akan move on to the second panel of discussion, ya. Yep, betul banget, betul Siapa banget. Siapa aja nih speaker ya buat second panel? Yep, sebe sebelumnya uh, aku mau ngucapin uh, thank you so much untuk di sesi pertama tadi yep. ada Mbak Belinda, Mbak Nadia, Mbak Deta sama uh, moderator kita. Uh, please to have you oh, tadi yeah. untuk jadi sharing sessionnya ya, seru banget pokoknya. Dan tapi di sesi kali dua kali kedua ini uh, sesi ini nggak nggak kalah hebat nggak kalah inspiring nggak kalah insightful dari sesi sebelumnya dan kita topik kali ini lebih ke the journey of woman founder di mana yang akan ngemoderate uh, sesi kedua ada uh, Mbak Stephanie Seputra founder of My Edu Solve yeah. dan untuk speakernya kita punya dua uh, perempuan-perempuan hebat nih buat sesi ini ada CEO of Waterhub ada Leonda Huaidi dan uh, ada Niki Suraya, co-founder of Goers. So without any further ado, let's welcome the Wonder Woman to the stage. Wow. Oke, okay. okay, boleh, boleh tepuk tangannya dong buat yang... Halo semuanya, welcome to the session. Um, hari ini kita ditemenin sama dua wanita luar biasa, which I'm really excited to talk to. So let's get started. Boleh kenalan dulu kali ya dari Leonda, silahkan. Oh yeah, hi everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me, Block 71 in Microsoft. I'm really grateful to be here. 
My name is Leon, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Waterhub. Uh, should I also introduce what Waterhub is? Yes, well, I... So I basically, Waterhub is a quota-based water rifle station. Um, asal muasal kenapa saya bing, uh, bangun Waterhub adalah karena... Uh, actually, I'll tell a little bit about uh, who I was before. So I was actually pursuing aerospace engineering ketika saya lagi kuliah. Um, at that time, I received actually um, a scholarship to Russia to continue my, my master's studies. Tapi um, throughout my college years, I was also exposed to, you know, like um, organizations that are focusing in environmental activities, gitu kan. And at that time, I, I thought to myself, gitu kan, well, why should I like uh, focus in developing to, um, you know, like, future uh, technologies and everything ketika saya sendiri sadar di Indonesia tuh masih banyak masalah yang seharusnya kita selesaikan dulu gitu and at that time the uh, problem yang saya fokusin adalah air gitu kenapa karena air adalah salah satu hal yang fundamental in our life tapi di Indonesia sendiri uh, manajemennya masih sangat buruk kan nah water hub itu kita ingin fokus air minum kebetulan jadi yang kita tahu kan air minum itu uh, diambil dari pergunungan di package in plastic bottles di uh, transport by you know like trucks and whatever kan baru baru akhirnya sampai ke uh, consumers nah that uh, apa proses itu kan sangat panjang and it's also cost extensive not effective dan mencemari lingkungan sadly so basically water hub kita ingin cut all that process uh, menggunakan our raffle stations yang di mana orang bisa uh, basically just refill, you know, maybe I can just talk about it later, uh, gimana detailnya, tapi that's basically who I am and what I'm currently working on. Thank you. Yeah, thanks so much for that. Actually, gue sempat liat your pitch di Startup Studio. Oh, yeah? Yeah, di mana you said, you know, Elon Musk thinks that the world is not livable anymore. <laughs> and his conclusion is, let's go outside of this world. True. But your conclusion is, let's make let's this Let's go back. <laughs> True. Yeah, yeah. So that's really cool. Thank, thank you. you, thank you. So, kenalan yuk sama speaker kita satu lagi, Mbak Niki dari Goers Indonesia, silahkan. Ya, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, perkenalkan nama saya Niki Surayaomi, ini biasa dipanggil Niki. I'm co-founder and CEO of Goers. Uh, dan Goers itu sendiri startup digital yang membantu destinasi wisata dan juga penyelenggara acara untuk uh, menjadi digital menggunakan platformnya kita. Dan banyak juga penyelenggara acara maupun destinasi-destinasi wisata di Indonesia yang udah pakai kita dan hopefully bisa lebih banyak lagi nanti yang bertransformasi menjadi digital. Gitu sih. Uh, fokus utamanya kita adalah connecting people with experiences. So um, it's both side of the world, jadi kita membantu penyelenggara acara dan destinasi wisata ini untuk menjangkau audiensnya secara digital maupun untuk customer-customer uh, untuk menemukan aktivitas-aktivitas serunya juga secara digital. Gitu. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Nah, kita mulai dari the very beginning dulu kali ya. Wow. <laughs> kan masalah di dunia ini banyak nih, dan kalian ini membuat bisnis untuk solve a problem ya. So, what made you ended up choosing the problem that you're solving right now? Mungkin sekarang dari Maniki dulu. Okay, so let me start. Why do I choose um, building a um, digital platform untuk uh, istilahnya mem mempertemukan penyelenggara acara dan destinasi wisata dengan audience? Uh, awalnya di tahun uh, akhir 2015 ya, kita buat ini, uh, waktu itu kita uh, menemukan it's so hard to find activities and workshops atau any kind of seminars or events that uh, you'd like to go to di kota-kotanya uh, kita gitu. It's so hard to find it. Dulu belum banyak orang yang pakai Instagram juga to sell their events and everything dan belum ada platform yang jadi agregatornya at the time. So, um, once we understand the pain points, we interview a lot of people juga. It's not just us that had that problem. Jadi kita ngerasa I think this is the kind of problem that can solve a lot of people's pain points at the time. Dan uh, setelah kita mulai masuk ke industri ini, kita mengumpulkan informasi acara-acara ini kayak crowdsourcing. Uh, terus kita sadar juga bahwa penyelenggara acara itu punya masalah yang sama. They actually have a problem to apa ya, istilah, engage with their audience, to sell their tickets, to you know seamless to have a seamless in, uh, registration and everything so we said why don't we build it gitu ya from scratch from uh, to help them dan dari situlah kita bikin goers awalnya memang bentuknya aplikasi tapi ya sekarang kita punya aplikasi punya website ada widgetnya juga yang bisa dipasang di websitenya partner-partnernya kita gitu jadi um, i think 
uh, why do we want to build this? Karena kita pengen everyone to live their life uh, to the fullest. Gitu. Kita pengen semua orang tuh uh, bisa belajar uh, di banyak tempat. Cause they probably want to learn it, tapi mungkin nggak tahu nyarinya acara di mana atau nggak tahu kayak weekend ini bisa ke acara apa lagi sih selain kayak kita pergi ke mall atau makan di restoran atau nonton film gitu ya. So we want to give these options gitu ke consumers and we want to help the organizers as well to reach the audience as well. Nah, that's the start when we build it, but now we are in a very different stage. Nanti mungkin aku cerita lebih lanjut lagi how we transition from just a B2 B2C company juga ke B2B2C company. Mm, looking forward to hear that story. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. So um, basically, as I stated earlier, kan, uh, there's a lot of problems that we're currently facing in terms of speaking of water, gitu kan. Um, dan dengan adanya water hub, kita ternyata bisa sanggup merubah itu, gitu. Dan um, imp- apa namanya, provenly speaking, uh, a single water hub machine bisa reducing 6,000 plastic waste wow. in a month. Um, equivalent to around like 1,200 kilograms of carbon dioxide juga karena kan sebenarnya ada transport even making the plastic itself juga uses you know like carbon dioxide emission and everything um, and also our users can actually uh, receive water very cheap gitu kan yang tadinya mungkin mereka harus spending a lot of money sekarang seliter mereka cuma bisa bayar seribu rupiah gitu kan so that's also one thing uh, yang menjadi key point kenapa kita bisa uh, apa namanya penetrate our market karena as you know sometimes di Indonesia itu they are actually aware of what are currently happening gitu kan the climate change and everything but they don't really have the urge to actually change you know from themselves you know jadi dengan adanya uh, key yang mereka bisa saving their money secara mindset itu kayak menguntungkan mereka so dengan itu akhirnya mereka ingin berhemat Tapi secara nggak langsung mereka juga membantu lingkungan. Jadi that's like a win-to-win solution, right? Uh, and that's basically why we started Waterhub. Gotcha. Thank you. Now that we know why and what is it exactly that you guys are building, let's go to how did you build this? Which is my favorite podcast on NPR. <laughs> Dan mungkin bukan hownya aja. Kayaknya kalau teman-teman di sini ya, apalagi yang nonton pasti pada mungkin pengen start your own startup juga. Tapi mungkin nggak tahu nih gimana caranya. Maybe how did you arrive at the current prototype? How did you know that this is the one to scale? Okay, that's, that's a very good question. And I think I can say I made a lot of mistakes back then. Like, we assume a lot in the beginning. Like, we thought that the, all the features that we built were the right kind of features that, uh, that we built and they tend to the right kind of audience. But then we realized that at the time, yang mungkin aku ceritain lebih detail, at the time kita pikir orang, target audience kita adalah first jobber atau orang yang udah kerja, because they have time and they have money. Uh, but then we realized after we um, spent time to build the prototype and also feeding it with contents, events, and everything, uh, we realized that a lot of our users who engage with the contents are um, students. Mahasiswa gitu, mahasiswa SMA, and then they, they have a lot of events actually. Uh, tapi at the time kita nggak realize, jadi kita banyak kayak bikin marketing campaign atau misalnya kita banyak engage sama um, audience dan organizer yang bikin acara-acara yang lebih lebih ke arah sana gitu. And then we, reali- we realize that um, it turns out uh, sebenarnya yang waktu itu at the time yang lebih banyak engage sama konten yang kita ternyata buat mahasiswa. Jadi kita banyak build fitur-fitur yang unik-unik yang bisa mereka pakai juga utilizing that. Tapi istilahnya, when we build something, uh, we, uh, kita sadar bahwa we cannot just assume it, gitu. bahwa itu yang akan dipakai sama customer-nya. We need to have uh, feedback from the actual users, and we need to see at the data juga. Gitu. Dalam artian adalah sebenarnya fitur apa yang sering dipakai, yang mana yang diklik. Kita juga pernah, kita bikin suatu fitur, it was a major change, tapi ternyata fitur itu nggak dipakai, akhirnya kita harus kayak, berpisah dengan fitur itu. Gitu. We have to let it go because it doesn't work. Jadi um, banyak ups and downnya ketika kita ngerjain ini. And I would say um, tidak bisa kita bikin sesuatu yang langsung perfect gitu. Kayak langsung perfect, langsung banyak dipakai sama banyak orang gitu. Sometimes you have to go through a lot of loops until you get to the point where your product is solving people's problem and a lot of people are using the product itself. Kayak sekarang. Uh, kita nggak cuma ada di events, tapi kita banyak bantu juga destinasi-destinasi wisata or um, tourism destinations kayak theme parks, water parks, 
untuk menggunakan sistemnya kita so, supaya mereka bisa lebih mandiri jualan um, dan banyak lah ya fitur-fitur yang kita build dari mereka itu pun kita sadar bahwa fitur-fitur yang kita build itu untuk menyelesaikan pain points mereka. Jadi awalnya kita banyak asumsi, sekarang kita lebih banyak ngobrol sama mereka. Okay, we have like hmm. weekly meeting or monthly meeting with a lot of um, our uh, partners yang di mana kita tanya, kalau kita tanya what do you need, pasti mereka nggak tahu kan. What do I need? I don't know gitu kan. Tapi if we ask them kayak what are your concerns during this business process? Atau misalnya kayak what are your problems atau your pain points gitu. And then they can give you some feedback gitu. Biasanya nanti mereka cerita, oh I have a problem gini, 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 gini. And then dari situ baru kita yang pikirin gitu. Solusinya, we are the uh, engineer ya. Maksudnya kita adalah desainernya gitu ya. So we can design the solution according to the problems that they face. Jadi yang penting adalah how-nya, you don't assume, ask a lot of feedback and see the data as well. Love that, thank you. Yes, thank you. I actually really resonate to that. The most important thing is to iterate right, and customer validate. So you can't say that you are actually targeting everyone. You can nggak bisa kayak bilang, oh, gua, this this product is actually uh, for everyone. Nggak bisa. You need to know your customer uh, customer personas. Maybe you have a lot of customer personas. Jadi mungkin nggak cuma targetin satu kategori doang. Tapi you need to understand what are their pain points and what are their needs, gitu kan? Because you can't just say that, oh, my baby is so perfect, this is my product, gitu kan? Nggak bisa. You need to actually um, make your product yang akhirnya kepake untuk your customer. Karena balik lagi, kalau misalnya nggak kepake, nggak akan dipake. True, ya true. Kan? Totally agree. And you're, you, you want your product to be used and akhirnya bisa kejual, maybe, or something, gitu kan? Uh, and for the long term, kalau misalnya kepake terus kan artinya yeah, you can survive, ya kan? Gak hanya cuman, oh, sekali habis itu udah, gitu. So, I think customer validation validation is really important. Uh, it's right, you need, you need to understand their pain points and everything. Terus nanti setelah customer validating, you need to uh, validate your product juga. Karena misalnya, oh, uh, I already know the pain points of my customers, tapi uh, is this prototype suitable untuk uh, solve that pain points? Kalau mungkin enggak, what are their feedbacks? Bikin lagi. Gitu kan? Nah, setelah produknya udah selesai, uh, you can validate your market eventually. Gitu. And I'm actually really lucky to have a lot of uh, mentors that actually um, apa ya kayak nasehatin saya di awal kayak gitu kan. Kalau enggak karena uh, Waterhub is actually a you know a hardware startup kan, bakal butuh cost yang besar. Kalau misalnya kita asal bikinnya, yang ada ngabisin uang gitu kan. And you know startup kita sebenarnya pingin grow fast, tapi with little money as possible yang ngasih kita to to elongate your runway right gitu sih by the way buat teman-teman yang lain kalau misalnya ada pertanyaan boleh di bit.ly kartini startups ya nanti ada di terima kasih tadi kepikiran sambil uh, kakaknya bilang banyak nih kegagalan-kegagalan jadi kepikiran lagi kalau misalnya orang mau mulai sebuah bisnis pasti takutnya itu adalah kegagalan nih Jadi mungkin True. pertanyaan saya adalah kegagalan terbaik apa nih yang kakak udah alamin so far? Wow, there are many, <laughs> I can say. Banyak banget dan kita kayaknya hampir mati mungkin tiga kali during wow. the time that we had um, the company. Karena di awal itu kita, we were, we were very new and at that time kayak belum banyak mentor, communities kayak sekarang. Tapi kalau sekarang I think um, the apa ya mungkin knowledge-nya udah ada banyak, mentors-nya juga ada banyak, community juga ada banyak kayak Block 71, Microsoft Founders Hub yang banyak akan banyak membantu kita. Dan at the time salah satu kesalahan yang pertama itu adalah we were trying to build thing um, apa istilahnya for, terlalu lama gitu. Jadi kita mau ngebikin sesuatu menunggu itu sampai kayak perfect dulu. That's the the first biggest mistake that we made gitu. Jadi kita ke, kelamaan gitu lo bikin sesuatu. If you want to build something yang Contohnya untuk kasusnya kita ya mungkin it would be different for a hardware company. Tapi untuk kasusnya kita harusnya within three months klik kita udah harus bisa deliver something and then check it, validate it, and then iterate on it. Tapi at the time kita kayak butuh waktu sekitar 6 bulan, terus kita nunggu sampai kayak semua fiturnya banyak. Padahal when the feature is too much, kayak people would be confused kayak which one that we need to use gitu kan. Nah, itu kesalahan pertama. Kesalahan kedua adalah we burn a lot of money. There, there were some... Ada, ada waktu di mana kita ngeburn money when when the business doesn't make sense gitu. Ketika kayak uh, the money that you burn more than the revenue that you get 
gitu. Sebenarnya itu make sense ya at the time. Kita tak tahu juga, tapi karena ya tadi mungkin yang dibilang juga bahwa kita mau grow fast gitu. Sometimes kita agak colluded with that apa ya istilahnya with that goal gitu. Kita pengen grow fast, kita pengen cepat dapat banyak jumlah users, tapi lupa bahwa kayak still profitability or you know sustainability of the revenue is is the most important part of the business gitu. Jadi um, those two things I think the biggest uh, mistakes and we nearly died three times but I, I'm very lucky to have amazing team that the first okay, uh, they are very amazing they, they've been with me since the start so ada beberapa ada I think uh, belasan team kita yang stay with us since the beginning and also I'm very lucky to have a lot of um, amazing mentors and the right type of investors as well. So when we look for an investor, it's not just because of the money. Yes, you need the money, but you can get money from a lot of people. But what we are looking for in the, uh, dari investor-investor yang um, Alhamdulillah kita dapat yang uh, sangat-sangat luar biasa adalah we can sin siner, apa, sin bisa bersinergi dengan mereka dan mereka adalah tipe-tipe yang with us for the long run. Gitu. Bukan tipe yang kayak Um, invest di kita, and then you have cepetan mau balikin duit gue gitu. It's not that type of investor. So we were very lucky to be able to have those people within our board, and commissioner, and the shareholders. Thank you for sharing Thank that. You. Yeah, I think I would like to add to that juga. So I think what's more, uh, what's also important mm -hmm. is to know your cost structure juga, because at the end of the day, your startup is also your business. Uh, you want it to uh, at least, uh, apa namanya, bisa sustain itself gitu kan kalau emang nggak profitable maybe your startup is a non-profit startup I don't know cuman uh, you need to make sure that it's able to sustain itself gitu karena kan um, there will be challenges when we want to raise money kan maybe pas kita fundraising yang tadinya kita targetin enam bulan runway tinggal delapan bulan tahunnya belum dapat dapat that's also a challenge you know and you need to also uh, prepare for that because that's also possible untuk terjadi gitu kan mm. uh, if that happens uh, what can you do can, can, uh, i mean you need to survive juga gitu kan so i think that's also one key to uh, apa namanya untuk di take note juga gitu sih thank you tema hari ini kan kartini startup ya <laughs> nah sebagai woman founders nih apa sih sebenarnya kayak potential Hal-hal yang kalian rasakan so far as you're building your startup and what is kind of like the role of your co-founders in this journey so far? Maybe this time around we can start with Leona. Yeah, well, um, actually kebetulan kalau di Waterhub uh, untuk apa namanya struktur tim kita hmm. untuk yang wanita baru saya aja. Oh, ya, yeah. <laughs> karena kebetulan memang kan kita hardware uh, kebanyakan engineering uh, apa namanya yang what do you call langsung gitu keras hmm. gitu kan ya. Uh, tapi I'm actually eager to to recruit more women juga uh, for for the future because I think I mean I can also contribute gitu kan pasti other women can as well so itu nggak akan limiting uh, apa namanya their their capability to actually uh, make something in engineering gitu kan. Um, yeah I think. That's that's what I want to do in the future. Karena I don't want to just make an impact in the environmental space, tapi mm -hmm. also in inclusivity as well and gender equality as well. Kan, gitu sih. Yeah, that's exciting. Thank you. Okay, so it's about the co-founder, right? Um, yes. uh, it's very unique within Goers. So we have um, three co-founders: me, uh, our CEO, which is also my brother. Um, and another one is my friend uh, who who were with me in ITB. Uh, kita kuliah bareng. Uh, so this, uh, I think, the the first step when you want to build a business is very important to pick the right co-founder, because you go through thick and thin with them. C you you can apa ya, mungkin bisa berantem dan segala macam, but still you know why you're doing this together. It's not just why you're doing this by yourself, but you why you're doing this together with them. So um, picking the right co-founder is very important and I'm very lucky to have them with me. They know that I'm very outspoken. I'm, I'm very alpha in the meeting. So um, uh, I'm, I'm very thankful that they, they see me as equal. And I think most of our team has seen me as equal as well. And um, after that, it's very important to pick 
your first at least five employees or five of your team because that defines the team culture as well so um, for that um, I think uh, hopefully for those of you who wants to start your company hope you find the right co-founder as well because it's very important for the journey you, you might see a lot of startup failures normally it's not because they run out, run out of money we were run out of money uh, one um, because you stick together and you want to fight, you still continue. So mostly startup fails not just because you run out of money or you, you fail the business or whatever, but because the founders decided to quit. Mm -hmm. I think that's most of the problem. Mungkin apa ya istilahnya, root cause-nya sebenarnya ke situ kan. Because if you fail the business, you can pivot. If you fail like the business model doesn't work, you can pivot. But if you decided to quit, then yeah, it's, it's over. Gitu. Thank you. Do you want to weigh in on co-founders and co-founder dynamics? <laughs> Nava, sorry. Do you want to weigh in on how is your relationship with your co-founder and the co-founder dynamics in your team? I think it's really important to uh, settle the co-founder roles in the very beginning. Mm. Kan ada namanya founder agreement, yeah? Yeah, you know, That's right. really important. And mungkin something that I should mention juga untuk di awal, um, maybe udah ada beberapa startup yang udah ada agreement, oh lu share segini ini, share segini segini. I think that kayak jangan langsung deh. You need to know dulu their contribution juga, yourself juga mungkin harus diuji juga gitu kan. By maybe like a few apalah waktu setelah ngelihat kontribusi kontribusi masing-masing baru bisa kayak uh, ditentukan gitu. Kalau misalnya ditentukan di awal tanpa melihat kontribusi dari masing-masing pihak um, agak nggak enak nggak sih kalau misalnya ditarik lagi sharenya mendingan jangan dibikin dulu terus dilihat baru di settle dibanding settle duluan dilihat ternyata kayaknya nggak oke okay, terus ditarik kan nggak enak I think that's also something that uh, I, I want to share juga buat yang lain and I don't think that's uh, common juga di share di uh, apa namanya kayak yeah, form kayak gini ya yeah. yeah sharing equity I think if I may add um, um, it, it would be different case by case. But for my case, because I know them quite well, I kind of know what they, uh, what, what, where they're good at. Kayak kira-kira kita mau ngebaginya gimana. So from the start, I we decided to agree on a certain equity level. So, but I think that only if you really know um, the co-founder. If you just meet them through communities or whatever, I think I would agree on the owner's approach because that might be more suitable because you don't really know the person, their skills or their capability, right? So, yeah. Okay, one question from the audience, Nih. Um, that your experience so far, how exactly do you build a good team? <laughs> wow. Yeah, um, it's a it's a work in progress to build a good team, but it's important for you as a leader to set the tone. Um, for example, sebenarnya monkey see monkey do lah ya sebenarnya kayak kayak all all your team will look up to you. Whatever you do, they will think that's the standard of the company. So it's very important for you to set the tone and the other co-founders as well to set the tone like what kind of culture do we want to build we have to agree it from the start jadi walaupun mungkin waktu di awal kita juga enggak menentukan kayak oh our company values or whatever gitu ya belum sih waktu itu belum kepikiran gitu ya tapi we know that we, we we're working very hard on this we want people to go the extra mile we want them to understand the mission and give their best gitu jadi istilahnya at least for that um, kita set itu dari awal dan along the way we can build the culture and values and everything. Saat ini sih kita punya kayak lima values dari namanya Goers itu sendiri. Goers itu growth, all ownership, air excellence, um, air reliable, dan as solid. Gitu. Jadi setiap kita meeting kayak uh, sometimes I over communicated even to our interns. Kita call them cadets gitu supaya mereka tahu bahwa we want them to grow in this company for whatever role they are in. Then kita pengen mereka fulfilling their passion juga di sini gitu. So I think that's one of the apa ya mungkin important thing, important thing to build a, a good team. The second one adalah you need to have one-on-one -on -one sessions with um, your direct reports, and you have to uh, made it as a standard supaya semua leader yang lain juga ngelakuin itu ke timnya mereka. So from this one on one biasanya nanti kita akan catch um, apa ya istilahnya the company dynamics, the role within within the, the team. Terus biasanya kita jadi tahu juga ada masalah apa nih mungkin di antara tim yang mungkin kita nggak terlalu uh, lihat 
uh, apa nggak terlalu detail tahunya gitu. We know it from the leaders, right? So ada beberapa kadang ya di, di, even kita di awal ketika di awal-awal tuh banyak juga leader-leader yang aduh nggak sempat bikin one on one gitu. Actually it's a very important thing gitu. Jadi um, if you haven't please do so. Mungkin itu sih salah satunya. Maybe I would like to add a little aja. Uh, I really agree. Uh, yang tadi, and also I would like to say juga kalau misalnya uh, culture itu fondasinya apa sih kebiasaan kan, so I think uh, kebiasaan dari uh, little groupnya ini akan menjadi culture of the company ahead and there's also a saying katanya 30 orang pertama in the yeah. startup makes the, the True, culture, makes the right? culture. Yeah. so I think that's really important juga when, when it comes to recruiting terus kayak Ya, yeah, I think awalnya it's just a small team, lama-lama akhirnya jadi kayak a, a big uh, company yang nanti jadinya culture dari company itself, dari kebiasaan si small member of the team tadi gitu sih. True, and if I may add, um, it doesn't mean that we are always perfect in hiring. Hiring is very hard, very hard to do and we made a lot of um, mistakes juga. Bukan berarti salah kandidatnya, tapi artinya kita sendiri salah dalam mendefinisikan role-nya, terus mungkin salah meng-hire orang yang ternyata kurang tepat untuk role yang kita butuhin. It's not, probably it's not the candidate's fault, tapi itu lebih ke arah, bisa jadi itu kita juga yang salah terhadap itu. Dan uh, it's a work, that's why it's a work in progress. Because you, you will always recruit people to build um, the, the company, to build the business. Thank you, thank you so much. Sayang banget waktunya udah habis, tapi oh. <laughs> kayak bener-bener selama ngobrol pengen ngobrol dengan lebih lanjut lagi. But maybe to close off, satu one last question ya. <laughs> Gak kerasa ya. <laughs> iya bener, cepat banget. Buat para teman-teman yang mau start their own business, for all the women who wants to start something out there, share some like tips or things that you would like for them to know and carry throughout, you know. Okay. Um, for me, if you are thinking about starting um, a company, just start. <laughs> Tipsnya adalah, you need to be able to start. Waktu, kit, waktu aku, waktu saya bikin um, goers juga waktu itu masih kerja di tempat lain. Jadi on the apa ya, di waktu-waktu yang senggang, kayak kita mulai kayak throwing out ideas, kayak mulai ngerjain kayak prototypes, wireframes, and everything. Tapi you just start. Yang kedua adalah be consistent. If you really want this, you will spend your time on this kayak every day um, when you have the time. Uh, dan yang ketiga aku setuju banget sama teman-teman um, Kartini yang tadi di session pertama, you have to be resilient. Because it's going to be a long journey and it's not going to be easy, but it's very fulfilling. Jadi for, for you, or who, who, uh, mungkin untuk teman-teman yang udah, pern, udah ngerasain ngerjain bisnis sendiri, you would know the, apa yang mungkin, um, uh, asiknya serunya gitu ya the fulfillment that you get when you really build this and see the impact of what you did gitu. Thank you. I also want to stress this kali lagi maybe ya uh, validate dan enggak ngebutuhin biaya sebenarnya di awal. You know, you can just interview people. Uh, I I I interview like around 400 people di awal. <laughs> yeah, wow. I mean like yeah, and That's you don't need money, right? Yeah, true, to interview. True. Yeah, because you need to at least understand their key uh, pain points dulu and for people who are just starting out biasanya kan belum punya modal maybe they're bootstrapping tapi yeah, yeah limited yeah, like that right yeah. so i think that's that's really important uh you need to uh apa namanya validate you can customer validate through interviews you don't need money through uh doing that you can also make like prototypes yang mungkin enggak i don't know there there's like figma and everything kan yes, yeah yes. and then you, you can see kayak mereka pas gunain app-nya kira-kira nyaman atau enggak and you don't need money you know and nanti ketika dari situ kan you can understand better and I think that's something that I want to stress if you're starting out the company. Thank you, thank you, thank you banget semuanya. Really, really amazing speaker, amazing Block 71 and Microsoft Indonesia. Aku kembalikan ke MC. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you.
was an amazing session. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Leonda, Nikki, and Stephanie for the session. Yes. I think the three of you should make a podcast. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> Woman Empowerment yes, Podcast. Go back on some crap. Serious. <laughs> okay, anyway, thank you so much once again uh, untuk session yang tadi. Very insightful, apalagi untuk uh, teman-teman di sini uh, dari segi experience as a founder. Ya. Soalnya yeah. tadi ceritanya banyak banget yang menginspirasi kita semua yang nonton kayak gitu. Oke, okay, so mungkin kita move ke next sessionnya dan yang mungkin ini session yang kita tunggu-tunggu juga ya. Soalnya iya. ini salah satu session utama di hari ini kayak gitu. Iya, jadi sekarang kita masukin session utama. Uh, kita juga mau mengimbat kembali Mas Vicky untuk menjelaskan tentang Founders Hub dan Code Without Barriers. Yes. Mas Kiwi, please. Oke, okay, beri tepuk tangan lagi untuk Mas Vicky. Oke, okay, uh, menjelang berbuka puasa, terima kasih sekali lagi kesempatannya. Um, ada dua program Microsoft yang hari ini akan saya coba uh, share ke teman-teman semua. Uh, Founders Hub dan Code Without Barriers. Uh, let's, let's get into Founders Hub. Jadi uh, di opening session saya, tadi saya bicara mengenai how Microsoft very look deeply into diversity and inclusion. When it comes to inclusion, That's the main idea kenapa Microsoft launch Founders Hub as part of our Microsoft for Startup program. Uh, the, the theme of Founders Hub actually tells you all the idea mengenai why this is inclusive. Founders Hub open to anyone uh, when it comes to start startup, even from an idea stage. Dan we was background of startup untuk join ke dalam Founders Hub program. To be exact, what are the benefits yang di offer di uh, Uh, Founders Hub. Firstly, we want to unlock innovations untuk startup from all stages. When it comes to stages, Microsoft membagi uh, four categories, whereby applicants dari Founders Hub nanti akan dikategorize menjadi uh, menjadi empat stages ini. Pertama adalah idea stage. Jadi even startup yang belum punya produk, when you still on idea stage, you can join Founders Hub. Um, And then setelah mempunyai MVPs, kalian akan bisa masuk nanti ke stage develop. Di sana akan ada higher benefits when it comes to monetary unlocking innovations dengan free Azure credit. Sorry, tadi lupa di mention. Um, that's the free Azure credit yang di stage develop akan lebih besar dari idea. Develop uh, is where you have your MVPs ready. Uh, dan kemudian di grow, uh, sudah mulai melaunching produknya ke market, you start having your customers. Um, and then looking to scale even more, that's the growth stage, dan terakhir di scale. Gitu ya. Jadi up to one, uh, 150.000 uh, USD on uh, free Azure credit. Dan tidak hanya di situ, uh, di Founders Hub juga akan diberikan akses kepada productivity tools, uh, termasuk di dalamnya GitHub, uh, Power BI, kemudian Microsoft 365, uh, all the productivity tools yang membantu uh, your startup to be more productive. Dan akses kepada recent technology. Salah satu yang uh, kami very proud untuk partner with adalah dengan Open AI. Jadi Open AI adalah bagian dari benefit di Founders Hub. As we know, uh, Open AI adalah uh, salah satu breakthrough di dalam um, GPT-3. Mungkin rekan-rekan yang, yang familiar dengan GPT-3, it's how we revolutionize um, NLPs, Natural Language Processing, dan jadi akan punya akses ke Open AI dan beberapa uh, startup tools. Seperti Ansarada yang membantu membangun fundraising strategi. 
Jadi uh, these are the benefits uh, joining Founders Hub program. So uh, when it comes to inclusive, kita akan berikan all the stages uh, dari applicants yang nanti di approve masuk ke, uh, ke, ke Founders Hub as part of the benefit adalah access to expert guidance. Jadi akan dapat um, mentoring circle yang uh, to the benefit of Microsoft jadinya adalah uh, global uh, mentoring circle. Baik itu dari bisnis, dari uh, veteran, dari industri, kemudian dari teknologi itu adalah part dari uh, akses yang akan diberikan kepada Founders Hub uh, members um, dan juga 24 kali 7 technical assistance jadi akan ada um, those resources, technical resources yang akan bisa membantu your startup untuk speed up your um, development um, I encourage you untuk uh, go to Founders Hub page di sana ada FAQ nya apa aja syaratnya, we are making it very accessible uh, for many startup backgrounds we don't require certain stages um, when it comes to funding kita nggak minta um, certain funding stage untuk bisa bergabung ke Founders Hub uh, you don't need to be backed up by certain investors we are being very, trying to be very inclusive um, dan di sini akan dijelaskan uh, SLA nya dalam, kalau saya nggak salah dalam 3 sampai 5 hari if you actually fulfilling all the uh, clearly itu akan di akan langsung dikabarin. Jadi it doesn't take months atau six months dan ya alhamdulillah udah ada beberapa startup Indonesia yang sudah di accept di Founders Hub sejak kita launching di Maret. I cannot reveal the exact numbers, tapi it's a very encouraging number dan um, kita punya specific um, I don't say privilege, tapi we are very um, acknowledging untuk startup yang bergerak di social entrepreneurs, jadi akan ada akan ada specific pro extended program yang kita kasih privilege untuk uh, social entrepreneurs kaitannya dengan sustainability tech. Jadi Water Hub, uh, you will have this um, extra benefits karena Microsoft really looking into this um, particular space. Edutech juga termasuk salah satunya. Jadi sustainability tech, edutech, um, health tech. Uh, akan bisa dapat extended benefit dari Founders Hub yaitu adalah uh, social enterprise uh, di Microsoft namanya GSEP Global Social Enterprise Program dan kalau tadi adalah program untuk um, startupsnya yang ini memang sangat ke kartini kartinian karena Microsoft ingin memberikan akses tadi uh, banyak sekali disampaikan bahwa kita menghadapi um, digital talent gap and a big part of that adalah bagaimana uh, woman under representation di dalam uh, digital ekonomi dan di Microsoft kita sangat percaya kalau digital ekonomi itu harus inklusif and by being inklusif adalah memberikan akses kepada under represented, represented gender which is woman untuk to be, mengambil peran di dalam uh, the digital ekonomi and therefore Microsoft membuat satu program yang code without barriers uh, to elevate the, the, the gender gap the close the gender gap di cloud data dan AI dan Um, programnya sebetulnya sudah dimulai di Asia Pasifik sejak um, pertengahan tahun lalu jadi sudah ada program Code Without Barriers ini yang bertujuan untuk memberikan um, akses kepada teknologi kepada perempuan di bidang cloud, data, dan AI ini sudah ada sekitar uh, 15 program partners yang bergabung di um, Code, Without, Code Without Barriers dan uh, recently kita roll out, roll out program ini ke Indonesia dan Alhamdulillah juga Um, sorry, kebalik slide-nya harusnya ada di sini ya. Uh, hari ini, persis di hari Kartini, uh, Microsoft sign up Code Without Barriers Partnership dengan Telkomsel. We just launched this. Jadi, kalau di illustrate, uh, how Code Without Barriers akan mingle dengan existing ecosystem, karena kami yakin, when we trying to address the challenge of diversity and inclusion, tidak bisa cuma satu atau dua pihak yang bekerja bersama. This is the kind of problem yang perlu di solve collectively, Uh, we as in society uh, need to come up together to solve this challenge. Sehingga kami ingin Code Without Barriers menjadi sebuah platform yang bring in together multiple parties, mulai adalah Indonesia government and policy makers, karena kami juga lean in ke G20 events, uh, jadi kami juga sedang bekerja sama, hopefully uh, Sri Kandi BUMN, uh, salah satu yang we are talking actively uh, to get into the, the CWB partnership, um, kemudian private sectors, Uh, perusahaan swasta, uh, semoga setelah Telkomsel akan ada lagi yang menyusul education sectors, kemudian partner kita di Asia Pasifik, 
dan Microsoft Indonesia Developer Community kita sekarang punya 26 um, community yang kita engage yang juga salah satunya kita um, collaborate uh, bareng juga sama Block 71 Female Geek Data Science Indonesia Data Engineer Indonesia um, Kubernetes Indonesia dan sebagainya so we want to bring all this community together bergabung di dalam uh, Code Without Barriers to actually facilitate uh, the access for women uh, to come participate and then um, innovate dengan cloud data dan AI gitu ya. Jadi is the spirit of being collective together rather than, rather than making our own program. Um, per, seperti apa programnya? Jadi mewakili talent journey-nya dari dari mulai we want to give um, the access of the technology. Jadi trainings dan certification untuk women talents when it comes to learning dan train and certify to actually start up uh, start with their uh, innovation. Mentor dan advocates, jadi uh, kita akan uh, visinya adalah kita akan membangun circles of women uh, mentors. Uh, kita sedang juga work with many parties tadi ya um, untuk bergabung dalam mentoring dan um, advocatesnya, sehingga when it comes to um, getting the women talents untuk be courageous uh, berdiri di antara apa namanya community male gitu ya, they, they need this mentoring circle to actually share together. Jadi kita ingin membentuk mentoringnya dari um, kolektif party yang tadi kita sedang uh, bangun networknya. And then internship and hiring, jadi contohnya seperti uh, Telkomsel. Um, end of the game dari program ini adalah memberikan akses employability kepada women. Of course, if we want to elevate the importance of giving the access gitu ya, ke digital, uh, ke women talents, the end game have to be employability, otherwise it's, it's not solving the, the problem. Jadi, uh, we want to influence how internship and hiring moving forward. Kita akan siapin uh, talent poolnya adalah woman yang ready dengan um, digital skills di cloud data dan AI. Therefore, hopefully we can see improvement, progress um, dari um, gender uh, in the workplace moving forward. Mentoring circle-nya sedang dibuka. Jadi, untuk siapapun yang ingin bergabung ke dalam um, First batch dari mentoring programnya CWB ini masih dibuka sampai 30 April, jadi masih ada waktu. Um, Oke, okay, uh, this is my last slide. Harusnya sudah jam berbuka puasa, uh, jadi uh, very appreciate uh, untuk waktu dan uh, kesempatannya. I hope I can see you all again di um, founders program. Go submit um, dan juga di CWB program anything yang ingin dikolaborasikan dengan CWB, we are open for partnership. Terima kasih banyak, selamat sore, selamat berbuka puasa, dan selamat tarik kartini. Oke, okay, uh, sekali lagi, thank you so much Mas Vicky untuk tadi penjelasannya uh, terkait Founders Hub itu apa, Code Without Barrier yeah. juga itu apa, tapi sebelumnya aku mau ucapin selamat berbuka jadi buat teman-teman yang ada, hadir di sini dan yang melaksanakan hari uh, hari puasa hari ini boleh bisa langsung aja ke belakang, kita sudah menyediakan takjil, habis itu boleh join lagi ke sini. Soalnya yes. kita masih ada beberapa session, satu session aja sih lagi ya. Yeah. Satu session aja, jadi uh, sekali lagi buat teman-teman yang mau buka puasa dulu, buat monggo ke belakang. Belakang, tapi yang enggak uh, bisa stay lagi dulu di sini. Oke, okay. okay, anyway, congratulations sekali lagi buat Microsoft Indonesia, Block 71 Indonesia, dan Innovation Factory atas terselenggaranya Founder Hub Launch hari ini. Yes, congratulations okay. juga congratulations. untuk sign up with the, dengan Telkomsel ya. Iya, yeah, betul, betul. MOU-nya, congrats Microsoft. <laughs> Oke, okay, tapi uh, kita masih ada satu session lagi yaitu announcement, di mana announcement ini kita mau announcement pemenang-pemenang uh, buat programnya Microsoft yaitu uh, Microsoft Devers Cloud Skill Challenge. Iya. Tapi sebelum kita announce pemenangnya, mungkin kita jelasin sedikit dulu ya terkait uh, program tersebut seperti apa ya, Ci? Iya, jadi Microsoft Cloud Skill Challenge itu adalah a 30 days online competition di mana para 
talenta digital menggunakan Microsoft Learn Platform untuk belajar dan berkompetisi di bidang data science, artificial intelligence, cloud security, and many more. Lebih dari 400 partisipan sudah mengikuti lomba Cloud Skill Challenge ini dan hari ini kita akan mengannounce top 10 winners-nya. Betul banget, jadi emang program ini salah satu program yang keren banget sih, soalnya ini challenge selama 30 hari dan sampai sekarang kita lihat datanya udah lebih dari 400 partisipan yang daftar di Cloud Skill Challenge ini. Oke, okay, without any further ado, mungkin kita akan announcement uh, Seven Constellation Prize dulu ya, jadi tujuh pemenang dulu uh, ya. di mana uh, pemenangnya akan mendapatkan voucher Imani dari uh, Microsoft dan Block 71. So nanti uh, lebih detailnya uh, pemenangnya akan menghubungi tim Block 71 ya? Yes, yes. betul. Mungkin kita langsung bacain aja ya uh, pemenangnya. pemenangnya. Uh -huh. Yang pertama, yang pertama ada dengan ID Chris Simbolon. Congratulations. Anissa Eva. Oke, okay, ada Ayu Nintias. Hasbi Mizan Azami. Da ada Atira Shiva. Bervianto dan Syariful MSTH. So, congratulations for okay. the consolation winners. Para pemenangnya. Dan yang kedua kita mau announce lagi untuk yang top 3 yang dapat uh, best uh, top grand prize ya. Yes, grand hmm. prize-nya. Oke. Okay. Congratulations to Echo.77. Yes. Habis itu ada Mas Cloud dan Patrick, Patrick Star. Star. Oke, okay, jadi untuk lebih detailnya, untuk yang mempunyai ID ini boleh langsung hubungin uh, tim dari Block, Block 71, 71 dan Microsoft kayak gitu. Betul. Oke, okay, uh, mungkin yang lain udah sambil menikmati takjil, soalnya kita juga bakalan didengar juga sampai sana ya. Jadi yes. ini juga uh, sekaligus menutup uh, acara hari ini ya Betul. di acara acara Microsoft Block 71 and Innovation Factory. Sekali lagi, congratulations untuk para peserta untuk dan para pemenang uh, Cloud Skill Challenge. Uh, thank you so much buat hadir. So, uh, kita udah ada penghujung acara nih, Cik. Iya, jadi sekali lagi, terima kasih banyak untuk hari ini. Aku, Agustin, dan my partner in crime, Alif. Yep. Kami berdua uh, pamit, undur diri. Habis gelap, terbitlah telang. Kepada hadirin yang datang, kami ucapkan banyak terima kasih. Dan sampai jumpa di lain hari. Oke, okay, sampai Thank jumpa you. semua. Thank you so much. Nah, ini bawa announcement. The best thing about working at Microsoft is definitely my team and team members. I am very grateful that I get to work with such talented engineers and they make work fun. I chose a career in technology because I'm naturally very curious. My job is developing the hardware of a topological quantum computer. And that is, of course, not a single person task. I am part of a big international team at Microsoft Quantum. I could mention tons of things that excites me about my job. So in my team, we work with the largest manufacturing companies to transform their businesses digitally. We are here to make companies cool, to enable them to achieve more. The best thing about my job is that it's not just about my job. At Microsoft, I get to feed my inner nerd while still having a family life that I appreciate. To me, it's extremely important that we have a diverse set of competencies in order to support our clients the best way possible. I feel like working at Microsoft, we are all valued by what we bring to the table, the ideas that we have, and not so much based on our gender, race, or sexuality. Tech being one of the highest paid sectors and also one of the areas where you have the most flexibility to work and manage your personal life, it can really be an empowering space. I feel it's very unfortunate that there is a gender gap in the tech industry. I sincerely believe that diversity is important because diversity leads to diverse opinions and diverse opinions leads to diverse solutions. There's a world of opportunities at Microsoft to join different communities and initiatives, whatever is interesting for you. Every industry is becoming a tech industry. So I would encourage everyone to go in this direction and play a role in order to translate the business pain points to something enabled by tech. I'm quite optimistic about the progress that I have seen the last few years, even at my young age, on the unequal gender balance in our industry. Even though there's still a lot of work to do, I can already see um, the difference. For example, when I joined engineering, we were 20 women out of 220. And by the time I graduated, we were triple that number. 
Microsoft offers a diverse and highly competent environment fostering personal growth. Technology is the present and the future. As much as we need technology, technology needs us. So we should join tech industry. Science is fun and entertaining, and you don't have to be a dork or a nerd to like science. You can just be a normal human who likes explosions. You know, if you have women leaders or diverse leaders, I think it just attracts other diversity, which I think is incredibly important, especially in a creative space. If you don't have diverse perspectives in technology, you're going to create technology that only represents a sliver of what our world is like. There is something for everyone. Players want to create characters that look like them or don't look like them, but they want to personalize things. You're seeing a, a lot more diversity in characters in games. You're seeing more diversity of people on the stage. And I think this is really important because, you know, gaming entertainment's for everyone, so we should all be giving input. I love doing things that are, are shaping the future and things that are new and innovative and open up opportunity. I think we are seriously on the precipice of something beautiful because all of us are coming together, we think different ways, everything is creative and we're getting these incredible products. It's about making sure all voices are heard. Not all voices are loud, but all voices are important. We all are our best when we embrace who we actually are. If you can see it, you can be it. I see Microsoft supporting women in data center roles, which is quite integral to meeting both the growth trajectory of this sector and delivering data center capacity at the scale that the organization needs us to perform, and also by having diverse um, viewpoints within our organization, it allows us to best represent the viewpoints of our customer base. It's not just technology, but I believe women has a different point of view and that is very important for making companies successful. It's very, very appealing to see the, the growth in women coming in and applying for the positions. I'd really like to think that at some point, just by virtue of numbers, the population of women in data centers and technology in general are going to grow organically but I think that Microsoft plays a huge part in ensuring that people have at least exposure to what technology is and the vast opportunities that are available. We want to get the best talent in Microsoft so that teams are successful, the product is successful, the business is successful. Um, and without, you know, you have to have the diversity because you have to bring in the best talent. It doesn't matter who you are, you know, where you came from, um, it's just about working together as a team. Microsoft uh, is different from other companies uh, about diversity and inclusion because we have uh, all kind of people working here and we have so much campaigns to uh, give to um, uh, help other people so I see a great company to do all the things. I decided to work at Microsoft because it's something I always want since I was a child. Um, and I saw here a lot of opportunities to grow and, and you know, get more skills. Microsoft wants to be the leader in the industry and we value the people that work here. That means we need to be different and we need to encourage ideas, um, recognize that it takes all sorts of individuals to contribute and all sorts of experiences to do that. Uh, Microsoft values all employees and that's why it has a great teams, very important teams and uh, we can reach our, our goals and objectives inside of the company. The goal was really just trying to get them comfortable not being afraid to make mistakes. Everybody listen to Courtney, please. So to get the cat to pop out, I had to, like, to get it out, do this math with it. And what's like, that math for? <laughs> to, when you click, to show where it will go. 
Okay, so every job is gonna, I believe, have more of a technology component to it. Company has taught me that nothing comes easy. <laughs> Girls Who Code is a lot more than just coding. Um, we cover a lot of life skills, asking questions, working together, and teamwork. Coding makes you like be able to create stuff. I get to see my what I create come to life. <laughs> can participate in our event as organizers and speaker who can help build our confidence. We have the same chance to uh, contribute regardless of where we came from and uh, our capabilities. Anyone can learn and start their career in tech as long as they are willing to deep learning and uh, developing themselves. Hello, my name is Nani Marin in India. I'm also a communication director in Female Geek. When I'm not coding, I'm doing test case and app testing using a manual test to make sure that uh, the app fits the requirements to deliver a good quality app. I explore, learn, and do experiments in automation testing, then implement it in the mobile app. I also study English to further my knowledge about IT vocabularies and terms. I love meeting new people. I'm, I'm an extrovert who gets energy when I a crowd, talk and love with them. My energy is boosted up and I want to be a part of introducing IT uh, to women across Indonesia. Uh, and for now, I'm uh, also communication director in Female Geek, and today Female Geek has uh, 11 regional communities all over the country. For example, Jakarta, Aceh, and Lombok. We do share knowledge, mentoring, and coaching for an IT ex IT field such as web development, mobile development, and everything else. Uh, we can ask and share uh, knowledge in one place because we have a uh, solidarity to help each other as a woman. Uh, in Female Geek, I learned to how to handle events, meet new people, make new friends, including my first experience as a speaker in front of more than 75 audiences. And I still remember that people listened and gave me claps after the event ends. Uh, we talked to each other and some of them uh, asked me to take a picture together and I felt like a celebrity. <laughs> And after that, I got chance as a speaker for some events, podcasts, and else. And it has helped me become more confident and believe in myself. Female Geek is a community for women, but we come from diverse backgrounds like students, employees, and entrep entrepreneurs and homemakers. Uh, I believe uh, women can participate in our event as organizers and speakers who can help build our confidence. We have the same chance to uh, contribute regardless of where we came from and uh, our capabilities. Like also, uh, we have one program, uh, Blend Coding, where we tell coding uh, like HTML, CSS, and PHP for people who are visually impaired. So some of them enroll in university and got good uh, GPAs. Yeah, uh, before COVID-19, uh, we often have gatherings and meetups. Now uh, we do that online through sharing session and group chat. As a woman working in the IT field in Indonesia, in my opinion, uh, IT women's progress still has a long way to go in area that men uh, dominate. Our presence in, in the IT field will create a more equal and diverse and diverse environment. For example, uh, men and women can equally share opinions and give inputs during a meeting at work. <laughs> Sometimes the woman just like a uh, still quiet and just listen but uh, maybe uh, a woman can improve their uh, share their opinions and uh, give inputs i mean uh, i think it is good uh, maybe some people find a new uh, purpose in the it area uh, technology will constantly develop making it in the it area trend and 
an in-demand job, then and anyone can learn and start their career in tech as long as they are willing to deep learning and uh, developing themselves. Yeah, just like uh, keep practicing for the coding, and then uh, try and learn new technology. Uh, when I wrote my thesis, I created a desktop app to generate automatic uh, queue numbers for hospitals. I went to hospital to uh, designate uh, my case background on developing the automatic queue number. Uh, the desktop contains the queue number and then uh, is the remaining uh, queue number and information about specialist doctor uh, the patient uh, wants to go to. I will tell my best self to learn and to keep practicing a little more and uh, because when I'm young, I'm, I'm a bit lazy <laughs> and I will tell her not to be afraid of doing trial and error. Error is vital, uh, but it is not in the end point the way uh, the press trial and error suggests. Instead, uh, it's a signal that something needs to change. Uh, it gives us the information we need to make an appropriate uh, adjustment to our behavior to either improve or redirect ourselves. I'm hoping to see more uh, women join the IT field and the and tech community to share knowledge and become uh, pioneers in the IT world. Seluruh perubahan ini dimungkinkan dengan hadirnya teknologi. Mixed reality is that it's not just driving new business outcomes. Juga dapat meningkatkan kualitas pendidikan. Wujudkan Indonesia nol karbon dengan dukungan peran teknologi dalam penyerapan karbon. As we think about why are these tools so important? It's all about being human, right? Agile, uh, Scrum, segala macam yang kita manfaatkan. Indonesia has almost 1 million digital talent. Mari kita kawal terus dan kita lahirkan terus talenta-talenta digital. Bagaimana industri itu kita dorong meng-upgrade kapabiliti diri dari digital-digital inisiatif yang ada dalam pemberdayaan uh, digital talent yang ada di Indonesia. The best thing about working at Microsoft is definitely my team and team members. I am very grateful that I get to work with such talented engineers and they make work fun. I chose a career in technology because I'm naturally very curious. My job is developing the hardware of a topological quantum computer. And that is of course not a single person task. I am part of a big international team at Microsoft Quantum. I could mention tons of things that excites me about my job. So in my team, we work with the largest manufacturing companies to transform their businesses digitally. We are here to make companies cool, to enable them to achieve more. The best thing about my job is that it's not just about my job. At Microsoft, I get to feed my inner nerd while still having a family life that I appreciate. To me, it's extremely important that we have a diverse set of competencies in order to support our clients the best way possible. 
I feel like working at Microsoft, we are all valued by what we bring to the table, the ideas that we have, and not so much based on our gender, race, or sexuality. Tech being one of the highest paid sectors and also one of the areas where you have the most flexibility to work and manage your personal life, it can really be an empowering space. I feel it's very unfortunate that there is a gender gap in the tech industry. I sincerely believe that diversity is important because diversity leads to diverse opinions and diverse opinions leads to diverse solutions. There's a world of opportunities at Microsoft to join different communities and initiatives, whatever is interesting for you. Every industry is becoming a tech industry. So I would encourage everyone to go in this direction and play a role in order to translate the business pain points to something enabled by tech. I'm quite optimistic about the progress that I have seen the last few years, even at my young age, on the unequal gender balance in our industry. Even though there's still a lot of work to do, I can already see um, the difference. For example, when I joined engineering, we were 20 women out of 220. And by the time I graduated, we were triple that number. Microsoft offers a diverse and highly competent environment fostering personal growth. Technology is the present and the future. As much as we need technology, technology needs us. So we should join tech industry. Science is fun and entertaining and you don't have to be a dork or a nerd to like science. You can just be a normal human who likes explosions. You know, if you have women leaders or diverse leaders, I think it just attracts other diversity, which I think is incredibly important, especially in a creative space. If you don't have diverse perspectives in technology, you're going to create technology that only represents a sliver of what our world is like. There is something for everyone. Players want to create characters that look like them, or don't look like them, but they want to personalize things. You're seeing a, a lot more diversity in characters in games. You're seeing more diversity of people on the stage. And I think this is really important because, you know, gaming entertainment's for everyone, so we should all be giving input. I love doing things that are shaping the future, and things that are new and innovative and open up opportunity. I think we are seriously on the precipice of something beautiful because all of us are coming together, we think different ways, everything is creative and we're getting these incredible products. It's about making sure all voices are heard. Not all voices are loud, but all voices are important. We all are our best when we embrace who we actually are. If you can see it, you can be it. I see Microsoft supporting women in data center roles, which is quite integral to meeting both the growth trajectory of this sector and delivering data center capacity at the scale that the organization needs us to perform, and also by having diverse um, viewpoints within our organization, it allows us to best represent the viewpoints of our customer base. It's not just technology, but I believe women has a different point of view, and that is very important for making companies successful. It's very, very appealing to see the, the growth in women coming in and applying for the positions. I'd really like to think that at some point, just by virtue of numbers, the population of women in data centers and technology in general are going to grow organically but I think that Microsoft plays a huge part in ensuring that people have at least exposure to what technology is and the vast opportunities that are available. We want to get the best talent at Microsoft so that teams are successful, the product is successful, the business is successful. Um, and without, you know, you have to have the diversity because you have to bring in the best talent. It doesn't matter who you are, you know, where you came from, um, it's just about working together as a team. Microsoft uh, is different from other companies uh, about diversity and inclusion because we have uh, all kind of people working here and we have so much campaigns to uh, give, to um, uh, help other people. So I see a great company to do all the things. I decided to work at Microsoft because it's something I always want since I was a child. Um, 
and I saw here a lot of opportunities to grow and, and you know, get more skills. Microsoft wants to be the leader in the industry and we value the people that work here. That means we need to be different and we need to encourage ideas, um, recognize that it takes all sorts of individuals to contribute and all sorts of experiences to do that. Uh, Microsoft values all employees and that's why it has uh, great teams, very important teams and uh, we can reach our, our goals and objectives inside of the company. The goal was really just trying to get them comfortable not being afraid to make mistakes. Everybody listen to Courtney, please. So to get the cat to pop out, I had to, like, to get it out, do this math with it. And what's like, that math for? <laughs> to, when you click, to show where it will go. Okay, so. Every job is gonna, I believe, have more of a technology component to it. The company has taught me that nothing comes easy. <laughs> Girls Who Code is a lot more than just coding. Um, we cover a lot of life skills, asking questions, working together, and teamwork. Coding makes you like be able to create stuff. I get to see my what I create come to life. <laughs> can participate in our event as organizers and speaker who can help build our confidence. We have the same chance to uh, contribute regardless of where we came from and uh, our capabilities. Anyone can learn and start their career in tech as long as they are willing to deep learning and uh, developing themselves. Hello, my name is Noni Marilyn India. I'm also a communication director in Female Geek. When I'm not coding, I'm doing test case and app testing using a manual test to make sure that uh, the app fits the requirements to deliver a good quality app. I explore, learn, and do experiments in automation testing, then implement it in the mobile app. I also study English to further my knowledge about IT vocabularies and terms. I love meeting new people. I'm, I'm an extrovert who gets energy when I a crowd, talk and love with them. My energy is boosted up and I want to be a part of introducing IT uh, to women across Indonesia. Uh, and for now, I'm uh, also communication director in Female Geek, and today Female Geek has uh, 11 regional communities all over the country. For example, Jakarta, Aceh, and Lombok. We do share knowledge, mentoring, and coaching for an IT ex IT field such as web development, mobile development, and everything else. Uh, we can ask and share uh, knowledge in one place because we have a uh, solidarity to help each other as a woman. Uh, in Female Geek, I learned to how to handle events, meet new people, make new friends, including my first experience as a speaker in front of more than 75 audiences. And I still remember that people listened and gave me claps after the event ends. Uh, we talked to each other and some of them uh, asked me to take a picture together and I felt like a celebrity. <laughs> And after that, I got chance as a speaker for some events, podcasts, and else. And it has helped me become more confident and believe in myself. 
female geek is a community for a woman, but we come from diverse backgrounds like students, employees, and entrepreneurs and homemakers. Uh, I believe a woman can participate in our event as organizers and speaker who can help build our confidence. We have the same chance to uh, contribute regardless of where we came from and uh, our capabilities like also, uh, we have one program, uh, Blend Coding, where we tell coding uh, like HTML, CSS, and PHP for people who are visually impaired. So, some of them enroll in university and got good uh, GPAs. Yeah, uh, before COVID-19, uh, we often have gatherings and meetups. Now, uh, we do that online through sharing session and group chat. As a woman working in the IT field in Indonesia, in my opinion, uh, IT women's progress still has a long way to go in area that men uh, dominate. Our presence in, in the IT field will create a more equal and diverse and diverse environment. For example, uh, men and women can equally share opinions and give inputs during a meeting at work. <laughs> Sometimes the woman just like a uh, still quiet and just listen but uh, maybe uh, a woman can improve their uh, share their opinions and uh, give inputs i mean uh, i think it is good uh, maybe some people find a new uh, purpose in the it area uh, technology will constantly develop making word it in the it area trend and and, and demand job then and anyone can learn and start their career in tech as long as they are willing to deep learning and uh, developing themselves. Yeah, just like uh, keep practicing for the coding and then uh, try and learn new technology. Uh, when I wrote my thesis, I created a desktop app to generate automatic uh, queue numbers for hospitals. I went to hospital to uh, designate uh, my case background on developing the automatic queue number. Uh, the desktop contains the queue number and then uh, is the remaining uh, queue number and information about specialist doctor uh, the patient uh, wants to go to. I will tell my best self to learn and to keep practicing a little more and uh, because when I'm young I'm, I'm a bit lazy <laughs> and I will tell her not to be afraid of doing trial and error error is vital, uh, but it is not in the end point the way uh, the press trial and error suggests. Instead, uh, it's a signal that something needs to change. Uh, it gives us the information we need to make an appropriate uh, adjustment to our behavior to either improve or redirect ourselves. I'm hoping to see more uh, women join the IT field and the and tech community to share knowledge and become uh, pioneers in the IT world. Seluruh perubahan ini dimungkinkan dengan hadirnya 
teknologi. Mix reality is that it's not just driving new business outcomes. Juga dapat meningkatkan kualitas pendidikan. Wujudkan Indonesia nol karbon dengan dukungan peran teknologi dalam penyerapan karbon. As we think about why are these tools so important? It's all about being human, right? Agile, uh, Scrum, segala macam yang kita manfaatkan. Indonesia has almost 1 million digital talent. Mari kita kawal terus dan kita lahirkan terus talenta-talenta digital. Bagaimana industri itu kita dorong mengupgrade capability diri dari digital-digital inisiatif yang ada dalam pemberdayaan uh, digital talent yang ada di Indonesia. The best thing about working at Microsoft is definitely my team and team members. I am very grateful that I get to work with such talented engineers and they make work fun. I chose a career in technology because I'm naturally very curious. My job is developing the hardware of a topological quantum computer. And that is of course not a single person task. I am part of a big international team at Microsoft Quantum. I could mention tons of things that excites me about my job. So in my team, we work with the largest manufacturing companies to transform their businesses digitally. We are here to make companies cool, to enable them to achieve more. The best thing about my job is that it's not just about my job. At Microsoft, I get to feed my inner nerd while still having a family life that I appreciate. To me, it's extremely important that we have a diverse set of competencies in order to support our clients the best way possible. I feel like working at Microsoft, we are all valued by what we bring to the table, the ideas that we have, and not so much based on our gender, race, or sexuality. Tech being one of the highest paid sectors and also one of the areas where you have the most flexibility to work and manage your personal life, it can really be an empowering space. I feel it's very unfortunate that there is a gender gap in the tech industry. I sincerely believe that diversity is important because diversity leads to diverse opinions and diverse opinions leads to diverse solutions. There's a world of opportunities at Microsoft to join different communities and initiatives, whatever is interesting for you. Every industry is becoming a tech industry. So I would encourage everyone to go in this direction and play a role in order to translate the business pain points to something enabled by tech. I'm quite optimistic about the progress that I have seen the last few years, even at my young age, on the unequal gender balance in our industry. Even though there's still a lot of work to do, I can already see um, the difference. For example, when I joined engineering, we were 20 women out of 220. And by the time I graduated, we were triple that number. Microsoft offers a diverse and highly competent environment fostering personal growth. Technology is the present and the future. As much as we need technology, technology needs us. So we should join tech industry. Science is fun and entertaining, and you don't have to be a dork or a nerd to like science. You can just be a normal human who likes explosions. You know, if you have women leaders or diverse leaders, I think it just attracts other diversity, which I think is incredibly important, especially in a creative space. If you don't have diverse perspectives in technology, you're going to create technology that only represents a sliver of what our world is like. There is something for everyone. Players want to create characters that look like them or don't look like them, but they want to personalize things. You're seeing a, a lot more diversity in characters in games. You're seeing more diversity of people on the stage. And I think this is really important because, you know, gaming entertainment's for everyone, so we should all be giving input. I love doing things that are shaping the future and things that are new and innovative and open up opportunity. I think we are seriously on the precipice of something beautiful because all of us are coming together, we think different ways, everything is creative and we're getting these incredible products. It's about making sure all voices are heard. Not all voices are loud, but all voices are important. We all are our best when we embrace who we actually are. If you can see it, you can be it.
I see Microsoft supporting women in data center roles, which is quite integral to meeting both the growth trajectory of this sector and delivering data center capacity at the scale that the organization needs us to perform, and also by having diverse um, viewpoints within our organization, it allows us to best represent the viewpoints of our customer base. It's not just technology, but I believe women has a different point of view, and that is very important for making companies successful. It's very, very appealing to see the, the growth in women coming in and applying for the positions. I'd really like to think that at some point, just by virtue of numbers, the population of women in data centers and technology in general are going to grow organically. But I think that Microsoft plays a huge part in ensuring that people have at least exposure to what technology is and the vast opportunities that are available. We want to get the best talent at Microsoft so that teams are successful, the product is successful, the business is successful. Um, and without, you know, you have to have the diversity because you have to bring in the best talent. It doesn't matter who you are, you know, where you came from, um, it's just about working together as a team. Microsoft uh, is different from other companies uh, about diversity and inclusion because we have uh, all kind of people working here and we have so much campaigns to uh, give, to um, uh, help other people. So I see a great company to do all the things. I decided to work at Microsoft because it's something I always want since I was a child. Um, and I saw here a lot of opportunities to grow and, and you know, get more skills. Microsoft wants to be the leader in the industry and we value the people that work here. That means we need to be different and we need to encourage ideas, um, recognize that it takes all sorts of individuals to contribute and all sorts of experiences to do that. Uh, Microsoft values all employees and that's why it has a great teams, very important teams and uh, we can reach our, our goals and objectives inside of the company. The goal was really just trying to get them comfortable not being afraid to make mistakes. Everybody listen to Courtney, please. So to get the cast pot out, I had to like dig it out, do this math with it. And what's like, that math for? <laughs> to when you click to show where it will go. Okay, so every job is gonna, I believe, have more of a technology component to it. Coding has taught me that nothing comes easy. <laughs> Girls Who Code is a lot more than just coding. Um, we cover a lot of life skills, asking questions, working together, and teamwork. Coding makes you like be able to create stuff. I get to see my what I create come to life. <laughs> participate in our event as organizers and speakers who can help build our confidence. We have the same chance to uh, contribute regardless of where we came from and uh, our capabilities. Anyone can learn and start their career in tech as long as they are willing to deep learning and uh, developing themselves. Hello, my name is Nani Marilyn India. I'm also a communication director in Female Geek. When I'm not coding, I'm doing test case and app testing using a manual test to make sure that uh, the app fits the requirements to deliver a good quality app. I explore, learn, and do experiments in automation testing, then implement it in the mobile app. 
I also study English to further my knowledge about IT vocabularies and terms. I love meeting new people. I'm, I'm an extrovert who gets energy when I'm a crowd, talk and love with them. My energy is boosted up and I want to be a part of introducing IT uh, to women across Indonesia. Uh, and for now, I'm uh, also communication director in Female Geek. And today, Female Geek has uh, 11 regional communities all over the country. For example, Jakarta, Aceh, and Lombok. We do share knowledge, mentoring, and coaching for an IT, ex IT field such as web development, mobile development, and everything else. Uh, we can ask and share uh, knowledge in one place because we have a solidarity to help each other as a woman. Uh, in Female Geek, I learned you how to handle events, meet new people, make new friends, including my first experience as a speaker in front of more than 75 audiences. And I still remember that people listened and gave me claps after the event ends. Uh, we talked to each other and some of them uh, asked me to take a picture together and I felt like a celebrity. <laughs> And after that, I got chance as a speaker for some events, podcasts, and else. And it has helped me become more confident and believe in myself. Female Geek is a community for women, but we come from diverse backgrounds like students, employees, and entrepreneurs and homemakers. Uh, I believe a woman can participate in our event as organizers and speakers who can help build our confidence. We have the same chance to uh, contribute regardless of where we came from and uh, our capabilities. Like also, uh, we have one program, uh, Blend Coding, where we tell coding uh, like HTML, CSS, and PHP for people who are visually impaired. So, some of them enroll in university and got good uh, GPAs. Yeah, uh, before COVID-19, uh, we often have gatherings and meetups. Now, uh, we do that online through sharing session and group chat. As a woman working in the IT field in Indonesia, in my opinion, uh, IT women's progress still has a long way to go in area that men uh, dominate. Our presence in, in the IT field will create a more equal and diverse and diverse environment. For example, uh, men and women can equally share opinions and give inputs during a meeting at work. <laughs> Sometimes the woman just like uh, still quiet and just listen but uh, maybe uh, a woman can improve their uh, share their opinions and uh, give inputs I mean uh, I think it is good uh, maybe some people find a new uh, purpose in the IT area uh, technology will constantly develop making word it in the IT area trend and and, and demand job then and anyone can learn and start their career in tech as long as they are willing to deep learning and uh, developing themselves. Yeah, just like uh, keep practicing for the coding and then uh, try and learn new technology. Uh, when I wrote my thesis, I created a desktop app to generate automatic uh, queue numbers for hospitals. I went to hospital to uh, designate uh, my case background on developing the automatic queue number. Uh, the desktop contains the queue number and then uh, is the remaining uh, queue number and information about specialist doctor uh, the patient uh, wants to go to. I will tell my best self to learn and to keep practicing a little more and uh, because when I'm young I'm, I'm a bit lazy <laughs> and I will tell her not to be afraid of doing trial and error error is vital uh, but it is not at the end point the way uh, the press trial and error suggests instead uh, it's a signal that something needs to change uh, it gives us the information we need to make an appropriate uh, adjustment to our behavior to either improve or redirect ourselves i'm hoping to see more uh, women join the it field and that and the community to share knowledge and become uh, pioneers in the IT world.
seluruh perubahan ini dimungkinkan dengan hadirnya teknologi. Mixed reality is that it's not just driving new business outcomes. Juga dapat meningkatkan kualitas pendidikan. Mewujudkan Indonesia nol karbon dengan dukungan peran teknologi dalam penyerapan karbon. As we think about why are these tools so important? It's all about being human, right? Agile, uh, Scrum, segala macam yang kita manfaatkan. Indonesia has almost 1 million digital talent. Mari kita kawal terus dan kita lahirkan terus talenta-talenta digital. Bagaimana industri itu kita dorong mengupgrade kapabiliti diri dari digital-digital inisiatif yang ada dalam pemberdayaan uh, digital talent yang ada di Indonesia. The best thing about working at Microsoft is definitely my team and team members. I am very grateful that I get to work with such talented engineers and they make work fun. I chose a career in technology because I'm naturally very curious. My job is developing the hardware of a topological quantum computer. And that is, of course, not a single person task. I am part of a big international team at Microsoft Quantum. I could mention tons of things that excite me about my job. So in my team, we work with the largest manufacturing companies to transform their businesses digitally. We are here to make companies cool, to enable them to achieve more. The best thing about my job is that it's not just about my job. At Microsoft, I get to feed my inner nerd while still having a family life that I appreciate. To me, it's extremely important that we have a diverse set of competencies in order to support our clients the best way possible. I feel like working at Microsoft, we are all valued by what we bring to the table, the ideas that we have, and not so much based on our gender, race or sexuality. Tech being one of the highest paid sectors and also one of the areas where you have the most flexibility to work and manage your personal life, it can really be an empowering space. I feel it's very unfortunate that there is a gender gap in the tech industry. I sincerely believe that diversity is important because diversity leads to diverse opinions and diverse opinions leads to diverse solutions. There's a world of opportunities at Microsoft to join different communities and initiatives, whatever is interesting for you. Every industry is becoming a tech industry. So I would encourage everyone to go in this direction and play a role in order to translate the business pain points to something enabled by tech. I'm quite optimistic about the progress that I have seen the last few years, even at my young age, on the unequal gender balance in our industry. Even though there's still a lot of work to do, I can already see um, the difference. For example, when I joined engineering, we were 20 women out of 220. And by the time I graduated, we were triple that number. Microsoft offers a diverse and highly competent environment fostering personal growth. Technology is the present and the future. As much as we need technology, technology needs us. So we should join tech industry. Science is fun and entertaining, and you don't have to be a dork or a nerd to like science. You can just be a normal human who likes explosions. You know, if you have women leaders or diverse leaders, I think it just attracts other diversity, which I think is incredibly important, especially in a creative space. If you don't have diverse perspectives in technology, you're going to create technology that only represents a sliver of what our world is like. There is something for everyone. Players want to create characters that look like them or don't look like them, but they want to personalize things. You're seeing a a lot more diversity in characters in games. You're seeing more diversity of people on the stage. And I think this is really important because, you know, gaming entertainment's for everyone, so we should all be giving input. I love doing things that are, are shaping the future and things that are new and innovative and open up opportunity. I think we are seriously on the precipice of something beautiful because all of us are coming together, we think different ways, everything is creative, and we're getting these incredible products. It's about making sure all voices are heard. Not all voices are loud, but all voices are important. We all are our best when we embrace who we actually are. If you can see it, you can be it.
I see Microsoft supporting women in data center roles, which is quite integral to meeting both the growth trajectory of this sector and delivering data center capacity at the scale that the organization needs us to perform, and also by having diverse um, viewpoints within our organization, it allows us to best represent the viewpoints of our customer base. It's not just technology, but I believe women has a different point of view, and that is very important for making companies successful. It's very, very appealing to see the, the growth in women coming in and applying for the positions. I'd really like to think that at some point, just by virtue of numbers, the population of women in data centers and technology in general are going to grow organically. But I think that Microsoft plays a huge part in ensuring that people have at least exposure to what technology is and the vast opportunities that are available. We want to get the best talent at Microsoft so that teams are successful, the product is successful, the business is successful. Um, and without, you know, you have to have the diversity because you have to bring in the best talent. It doesn't matter who you are, you know, where you came from, um, it's just about working together as a team. Microsoft uh, is different from other companies uh, about diversity and inclusion because we have uh, all kind of people working here and we have so much campaigns to uh, give, to um, uh, help other people. So I see a great company to do all the things. I decided to work at Microsoft because it's something I always want since I was a child. Um, and I saw here a lot of opportunities to grow and, and you know, get more skills. Microsoft wants to be the leader in the industry and we value the people that work here. That means we need to be different and we need to encourage ideas, um, recognize that it takes all sorts of individuals to contribute and all sorts of experiences to do that. Uh, Microsoft values all employees and that's why it has uh, great teams, very important teams and uh, we can reach our, our goals and objectives inside of the company. The goal was really just trying to get them comfortable not being afraid to make mistakes. Everybody listen to Courtney, please. So to get the cast pop out, I had to like to get it out, do this math with it. And what's like, that math for? <laughs> to when you click to show where it will go. Okay, so every job is gonna, I believe, have more of a technology component to it. Coding has taught me that nothing comes easy. <laughs> Girls Who Code is a lot more than just coding. Um, we cover a lot of life skills, asking questions, working together, and teamwork. Coding makes you like be able to create stuff. I get to see my what I create come to life. <laughs> participate in our event as organizers and speakers who can help build our confidence. We have the same chance to uh, contribute regardless of where we came from and uh, our capabilities. Anyone can learn and start their career in tech as long as they are willing to deep learning and uh, developing themselves. My name is Nani in India. I'm also a communication director in Female Geek. When I'm not coding, I'm doing test case and app testing using a manual test to make sure that uh, the app fits the requirements to deliver a good quality app. I explore, learn, and do experiments in automation testing, then implement it in the mobile app. 
I also study English to further my knowledge about IT vocabularies and terms. I love meeting new people. I'm I'm an extrovert who gets energy when I a crowd talk and love with them. My energy is boosted up, and I want to be a part of introducing IT uh, to women across Indonesia. Uh, and for now, I'm uh, also communication director in Female Geek. And today, Female Geek has uh, 11 regional communities all over the country. For example, Jakarta, Aceh, and Lombok. We do share knowledge mentoring and coaching for an IT, ex IT field such as web development, mobile development, and everything else. Uh, we can ask and share uh, knowledge in one place because we have a solidarity to help each other as a woman. Uh, in Female Geek, I learned you how to handle events, meet new people, make new friends, including my first experience as a speaker in front of more than 75 audiences. And I still remember that people listened and gave me claps after the event ends. Uh, we talked to each other and some of them uh, asked me to take a picture together and I felt like a celebrity. <laughs> and after that, I got chance as a speaker for some events podcast and else and it has helped me become more confident and believe in myself female geek is a community for women but we come from diverse backgrounds like students employees and entrepreneurs and homemakers uh, i believe a woman can participate in our event as organizers and speaker who can help build our confidence we have the same chance to uh, contribute regardless of where we came from and uh, our capabilities like also, uh, we have one program, uh, Blend Coding, where we tell coding uh, like HTML, CSS, and PHP for people who are visually impaired. So, some of them enroll in university and got good uh, GPAs. Yeah, uh, before COVID-19, uh, we often have gatherings and meetups. Now, uh, we do that online through sharing session and group chat. As a woman working in the IT field in Indonesia, in my opinion, uh, IT women's progress still has a long way to go in area that men uh, dominate. Our presence in, in the IT field will create a more equal and diverse and diverse environment. For example, uh, men and women can equally share opinions and give inputs during a meeting at work. Sometimes the woman just like uh, still quiet and just listen but uh, maybe uh, a woman can improve their uh, share their opinions and uh, give inputs I mean uh, I think it is good uh, maybe some people find a new uh, purpose in the IT area uh, technology will constantly develop make it worth it in the IT area trend and and, and demand job then and anyone can learn and start their career in tech as long as they are willing to deep learning and uh, developing themselves. Yeah, just like uh, keep practicing for the coding and then uh, try and learn new technology. Uh, when I wrote my thesis, I created a desktop app to generate automatic uh, queue numbers for hospitals. I went to hospital to uh, designate uh, my case background on developing being the automatic queue number uh, the desktop contains the queue number and then uh, is the remaining uh, queue number and information about specialist doctor uh, the patient uh, wants to go to i will tell my best self to learn and to keep practicing a little more and uh, because when i'm young i'm, I'm a bit lazy <laughs> And I will tell her not to be afraid of doing trial and error. Error is vital, uh, but it is not at the end point the way uh, the press trial and error suggests. Instead, uh, it's a signal that something needs to change. Uh, it gives us the information we need to make an appropriate uh, adjustment to our behavior to either improve or redirect ourselves. I'm hoping to see more uh, women join the IT field and the and tech community to share knowledge and become uh, pioneers in the IT world.
Seluruh perubahan ini dimungkinkan dengan hadirnya teknologi. Mixed reality is that it's not just driving new business outcome. Juga dapat meningkatkan kualitas pendidikan. Wujudkan Indonesia nol karbon dengan dukungan peran teknologi dalam penyerapan karbon. As we think about why are these tools so important? It's all about being human, right? Agile, uh, Scrum, segala macam yang kita manfaatkan. Indonesia has almost 1 million digital talent. Mari kita kawal terus dan kita lahirkan terus talenta-talenta digital. Bagaimana industri itu kita dorong untuk upgrade dapat begitu diri dari digital-digital inisiatif yang ada dalam pemberdayaan uh, digital talent yang ada di Indonesia. The best thing about working at Microsoft is definitely my team and team members. I am very grateful that I get to work with such talented engineers and they make work fun. I chose a career in technology because I am naturally very curious. My job is developing the hardware of a topological quantum computer. And that is of course not a single person task. I am part of a big international team at Microsoft Quantum. I could mention tons of things that excites me about my job. So in my team, we work with the largest manufacturing companies to transform their businesses digitally. We are here to make companies cool, to enable them to achieve more. The best thing about my job is that it's not just about my job. At Microsoft, I get to feed my inner nerd while still having a family life that I appreciate. To me, it's extremely important that we have a diverse set of competencies in order to support our clients the best way possible. I feel like working at Microsoft, we are all valued by what we bring to the table, the ideas that we have, and not so much based on our gender, race or sexuality. Tech being one of the highest paid sectors and also one of the areas where you have the most flexibility to work and manage your personal life, it can really be an empowering space. I feel it's very unfortunate that there is a gender gap in the tech industry. I sincerely believe that diversity is important because diversity leads to diverse opinions and diverse opinions leads to diverse solutions. There's a world of opportunities at Microsoft to join different communities and initiatives, whatever is interesting for you. Every industry is becoming a tech industry. So I would encourage everyone to go in this direction and play a role in order to translate the business pain points to something enabled by tech. I'm quite optimistic about the progress that I have seen the last few years, even at my young age, on the unequal gender balance in our industry. Even though there's still a lot of work to do, I can already see um, the difference. For example, when I joined engineering, we were 20 women out of 220. And by the time I graduated, we were triple that number. Microsoft offers a diverse and highly competent environment fostering personal growth. Technology is the present and the future. As much as we need technology, technology needs us. So we should join tech industry. Science is fun and entertaining, and you don't have to be a dork or a nerd to like science. You can just be a normal human who likes explosions. You know, if you have women leaders or diverse leaders, I think it just attracts other diversity, which I think is incredibly important, especially in a creative space. If you don't have diverse perspectives in technology, you're going to create technology that only represents a sliver of what our world is like. There is something for everyone. Players want to create characters that look like them or don't look like them, but they want to personalize things. You're seeing a a lot more diversity in characters in games. You're seeing more diversity of people on the stage. And I think this is really important because, you know, gaming entertainment's for everyone, so we should all be giving input. I love doing things that are, are shaping the future and things that are new and innovative and open up opportunity. I think we are seriously on the precipice of something beautiful because all of us are coming together, we think different ways, everything is creative, and we're getting these incredible products. It's about making sure all voices are heard. Not all voices are loud, but all voices are important. We all are our best when we embrace who we actually are. If you can see it, you can be it. 